Valuable Players Awards have been provided by Midway Sporting Goods. Midway Sporting Goods, featuring a wide variety of the finest in team and individual sporting goods, located in the Midway Mall in southwest Miami. Channel 17 presents South Florida's weekly play-by-play -play sports program, Sunday Sports. Each week, Sunday Sports showcases the area's athletes and teams. With host Nick Belmonte. Football analyst Bill Trout. Reporter Tom Levy. And Channel 17's coordinator for sports programming, Rick Potlock, handling the play-by-play. -play. Now, let's go down to the sidelines for comments before the action gets underway. Tamiami Stadium on the campus of Florida International University. Welcome to another edition of High School Football on Sunday Sports. With Rick Potlock, hello again everybody, I'm Nick Belmonte. And today we have an inter-district battle between the Coral Park Rams and the Sunset Knights. Last week was the first week of high school football in Dade County, so let's start off by looking at the polls. Not really a lot of changes. On top to Carroll City Cheese, followed by number two to Southridge Spartans. And if you don't know, Carroll City beat Southridge this weekend, eight to nothing. Number three is South Miami, eschewing the move up in the polls next week. Number four, American. Number five, Coral Gables. Number six, Palmetto. Number seven, Miami Springs. Number eight, Miami Beach. Number nine, Miami High. And number 10, Homestead. The Florida Sports Riders 5A top 10 poll looks like this. Pensacola Pine Forest on top. The Carroll City Chiefs are at number two. Number three, Sarasota Riverview. Number four, Pensacola, Washington. Number five, Boyd Anderson. Number six, Lake City, Columbia. Number seven, Winter Park. Number eight, Sarasota. Number nine, South Miami. And number 10, Bradenton, Manatee. And speaking of changes, one of the things that have to change, hopefully, for the Coral Park Rams tonight, and Rick Potlock, your alma mater, Coral Park, is the losing streak. They have not won a ball game since 1986. They went 0-10 last year. They lost their opener. Could tonight be the night? Tonight could be the night, uh, and for Ernest Perkins and the Coal Park Rams, it has to come against a team like Sunset or Southwest, because they play in District 15, and they have to play the Miami Beaches and the Coral Gableses and the Miami Highs, and they're not going to beat those teams, not this year, not this year. And the big reason is numbers, and by numbers we mean roster size. Mm -hmm. There are only 30 dressed Coal Park players in uniform tonight, which means that you're going to see in the fourth quarter a lot of tired football players. Uh, as with any team that has numbers like this, Nick, you're going to see your best athletes playing both ways. So you'll see Bobby Castro, number 60, playing both ways tonight. You'll see Fernando Ruiz, number three. He'll play maybe three positions tonight, two on offense and one on defense. Uh, you'll see the quarterback doing a lot of different things. You'll see Derek Perez, probably the most versatile guy on Coral Park. He'll be doing the punting. He'll be re returning punts and kickoffs. He'll be playing wide receiver. Could even see him line up in the backfield as a running back on a play or two. So that's what it means to this team. And I asked Coach Perkins about that early in the year. With only 30 guys, are you going to bring anybody up before the six-week JV season is over? And he said, no, he wants to make sure that the JV team plays all of their guys as a unit, all six games and then after the JV season bring everybody up in mass and he said he wants to develop cohesiveness on a varsity level and a junior varsity level but the one thing about Ernest Perkins that we haven't seen in Coal Park coaches in the last couple years is enthusiasm going into the job even after the first game maybe after the first two games uh, they got pasted pretty good by Palmetto last week 24 to nothing it did not daunt him at all uh, he remains just as optimistic as he was going into it. And I said, Coach, I hope you make it all the way through the year that way because it could be a long year with only 30 guys. Sure. The first six games are a big key for them. They have to stay healthy. With only 30 guys, you get a key injury or two and your season is over. 
uh, as much as it can be pretty much at that point, particularly if he sticks with his threat not to bring the JV guys up earlier. Of course, if they get a lot of rash of injuries, that's going to change definitely. On the other side of the coin, you have Sunset. They should have won last week against Southwest. They lost 7-6. to six. They should have won. They had a touchdown called back. They missed an extra point. And with 25 seconds left in the game, Andrew Kondrak, the quarterback in the center, missed the snap count together. The ball fumbled. The guy fell on it. They lost the game. So they had the chance to win the game. They could be 1-0. Um, I think that will not harm them psychologically. I think they'll just shake it off and go into it. Steve Cron, the coach of Sunset, feels very optimistic about coming back, rebounding against a team like Coral Park. We're going to see a wide open passing game, I think, from both teams. Kondrak can really wing the ball. He's got a very good receiver named Omar Vinas to throw to. And he's another versatile guy. He'll kick off, do the field goal and placement kicking. Uh, he does the punting. The kicking game, though, for Sunset is their big bugaboo. Uh, they had a punt block last week against uh, Southwest, and it cost them. It cost them the touchdown indirectly uh, because after the block punt, Southwest was able to take it in. Uh, Venus is not the greatest kicker in the world like a Fouad Reves or anybody like that that went to Sunset High School. You know, so you have to think about that, and don't even try and compare the two. Venus is a better yeah, receiver than he is a kicker. You're being a little unfair there, I think. <laughs> I think a thing tonight we need to look at is the rushing game. Louis LaFond for, yes. for Sunset had 119 yards himself on 28 carries. On the other side of the coin, Coral Park in 19 rushes. Nine net yards. Right. Fernando Ruiz was their most effective runner last week. He had 37 yards, had a lot of guys for Cole Park in negative yardage. For Sunset, a very underrated football player, Louis LaFont. Louis LaFont will wear number 30 in the game tonight. 28 rushes, 119 yards, as Nick mentioned, by himself. And out of the backfield, caught the only touchdown for Sunset on a 15-yard reception. He's got uh, the, the soft hands that you look for. And Bob Coleman is a blocking fullback. He's probably the best blocker that LaFont's had in the three years he's been there at Sunset to run behind. So you may see some big gainers, particularly not so much in the first half, but the second half, again, because of the numbers game, Nick. And I think that's going to be a big key to the game. Now, if you were Sunset and Steve Cron, you, you kind of used the analogy of when Roger Maris was going for the 61st home run. You didn't want to be the pitcher on the mound to give it up. You don't want to be the team to lose to Coral Park to break the streak. On the other hand, I'm going to ask you, if you're Ernest Perkins, what do you tell your guys? You haven't won a game since 86. I say play wide open. I don't care what's happened the last couple of years. You give it everything you've got. Let's even throw some of the plays into the book that we haven't used in a couple of years. You might see some gimmick plays. That's what I would try and do. And I would do it early, and I would do it often. I would use the Bobby Bowden theory. Run a reverse to open the game, then come right back with a halfback option. Maybe run another reverse. Try and do something crazy on a kickoff. Anything to get the momentum turned around. Remember, this is not brain surgery, folks. This is just high school football. <laughs> just go out and have fun, streak or no streak. Rick, we look forward to your comments tonight. Okay, Nick. It's the Coral Park Rams and the Sunset Knights coming up. Stay tuned for the starting lineups and opening kickoffs after you take a look at this. As you listen to the tail end of the National Anthem, you can tell we're just a couple minutes away from the kickoff. The Coral Park Rams won the toss. They will keep their option to the second half. So they will kick off to sunset. We'll take a look at the referees and give you offense and defense. Referees in the game, Al Riveron. Dick Schofield is the umpire. The line judge tonight is Mike Kyle. The linesman in the game is Harry Smith. The back judge is Larry LaBelle. And the timer tonight is Randy Merrill. For the Sunset Knights offense, here's how they'll set it up in the backfield. It'll be Andrew Kondrat. He'll be backed by Louis LaFont and Bob Coleman. The receivers will be George Malvestudo, Omar Vinas, and Chuck Carl is the tight end. And the offensive line, Lee Fernandez, Rick Rivera, Tony Valsorel, Rock Guerrero, and John Crocker is the center. The Coral Park defense, the down five men, for the Coral Park Rams, 
They line up this way, Carlos Rodriguez, Alex Carter, Maxi Martinez, Mike Coppola, and J.C. Ramos are your front five. We'll give you the rest in a minute as the kickoff goes deep to Louis LaFon on the far side at the nine-yard line. LaFon across the 25 to the 29-yard line, and the Sunset Knights will set up right there. We've showed you the lineup for the Rams front five. Here's their linebackers. It'll be Alfredo Leon and Eduardo Martinez, the two linebackers. And the deep secondary for the Coral Park Rams, Gabriel Albello, Fernando Ruiz, Andy Sierra, and Gerardo Buitrago, number 11, Buitrago. First play from scrimmage. Andrew Kondrat, the quarterback, he'll have LaFont as the tailback and Coleman the upback. LaFont gets the pitch and dragged down from behind, but not before he gets about three and a half, maybe even four yards. Rick, a guy they're going to have to stop tonight is Louis LaFont carried the ball 28 times last week. And you know Coral Park is going to be ready for him tonight. They, they need this series to stop Coral, to start the sunset in this series right here to get the momentum going their way and get things going positive as we talked to Ernest Perkins before the game. Steve Cron looking on the sidelines. He's the head coach at Sunset. He's in his second year. The backs again will be in the I formation. And it's LaFont a second time. Gets around Maxi Martinez and is driven out of bounds at about the 37 yard line. Sunset will be about four yards short, maybe three yards short of a first down. Maxi Martinez, the nose man, looped around, took a dive at LaFont, but couldn't come up with a tackle. Third and three. 10.43 to go first quarter from Tamiami Stadium. Just underway. Coral Park in the white uniform, sunset in the black. That holds true for black and white or color sets tonight. Nick Sunset has some really odd uniform pants. They have shiny sides in the front and dull sides on the back. LaFont, a third straight time. Sheds tacklers left and right. Finally dragged down by the Coral Park defense, J.C. Ramos, 45-yard line. Well enough for the first down, and the Sunset Knights underway, and they're going to go with Louis LaFont until he's stopped. Take a look at this replay one more time. You're going to see LaFont just digging and churning his way, and we'll look at it from the ground level. LaFont again, five straight times to Lewis LaFont, 45 to the 46 yard line, short pickup that time. Some of the Sunset Night fans on hand, they're fired up and ready. And as Nick mentioned, we talked to Ernest Perkins, they're treating this game as their season opener. They're forgetting about the game last week with Ernest Perkins before the game and like you said this is game number one as far as Coral Park is concerned tonight. Kondrat to pass for the first time he'll go flat pass to Omar Vinas and Vinas up to midfield brought down on the play by 27 for the Coral Park Rams Andy Sierra he's helped out by Eddie Martinez. Alfredo Leon also made the initial hit and they were close uh, to a piling on penalty right there. Take a look at Kondrat as he goes back to pass, and Kondrat had the good protection that time. It's just a quick pass, and, and he, you, know, you see almost a late hit. That could have been easily called right there. Coral Park, Coral Park with 11 penalties for almost 100 yards last week, and it might be done with penalties like that. They got lucky that time and didn't get the call. Chuck Carl, the split end switched sides, and Kondrat with a short drop. He'll go right side. And he finds Vinas at the 45-yard line. Vinas finally run out of bounds at the 42-yard line. Run out of bounds over there by Fernando Ruiz, but not before another first down for Sunset. And the Knights taking the opening kickoff and marching it right down 
and it's been a contrast. First it's the running of Louis LaFont, now it's the passing of this man. Well, the, th the pass is not drawn well, but Venus, if you will, makes the catch. Nine-yard pickup, eight minutes, 50 seconds to go here. How can you tell when old friends are having fun? Well, we recognize each other's smells. They hit the bottom of the screen. And Kondrat gives off to LaFont. LaFont kind of freelancing on the play, gets across the 35 down to the 33-yard line. I think that one was designed to go off tackle, and Vinos decided that, or uh, LaFont decided he wanted to go somewhere else. Well, that's what we said about LaFont as you look at some of the crowd. LaFont's a type of runner that's going to find the holes. He's not going to, he's going to take his time. If he doesn't see something going one way, he'll break outside. And a little improvisation right there, Rick. LaFont unofficially, four carries, 16 yards. Second and 10 now. I'll make that second and two. And the front to the up man, Coleman, big hole for Coleman, breaks to the right side across the 25, 20, and across the 20 to the 19, maybe even the 18 yard line. Rick, that's what happens when you run the ball to the same guy so many times, they're keying on him. And the quick handoff caught the linebackers uh, by surprise and he had the whole side open. Gonna be marked at the 17 yard line, first down. And Coleman finds a big hole and takes off on his own and Ruiz has to come from the safety spot to bring him down. 15 yards and a first down with 8.02 to go first quarter. Condrat puts him in the split back formation or the pro set if you will. And the pitch goes to Coleman again. And Coleman uh, finds Coleman good running carry. room down to about the 12 yard line. So five more yards. From the safety over, there's seven people. Carlos Rodriguez and Andy Sierra. That was the Sunset defensive five. coordinator talking to the press box. Second down, five. Well, Rick, this has been a pretty mixed attack right here, but no long passes, but the running game short. Off tackle to LaFont and the quick the quick passes. Let's see what he comes up with here. Chuck Carl switches from left to right. Kondrat hands off to Stephen Hurst, who's in the game, and Maxi Martinez, the middle guard, Steve fights Hurst. off the block of the center, John Crocker, and comes in to make the tackle. Good defensive play right there, bringing up a third and about five yards right here. Well, Kondrat, as we've seen, has not been afraid to pass. And the Sunset Knight fans are really fired up for this one. Maybe the Coral Park fans aren't believers yet, but they're still filing into the stands here. Kondrat, handoff to Hurst. Hurst escapes the one man, but Alfredo Leone brings him down as a penalty marker goes down as well. I wonder if he got a face mask right there. No, he did. Not That's by the way the Coral Park Rams are reacting. Alex Carter in particular. Holding oh. will be the call. Mm. That's a penalty a drive stopper if there ever was the one. Well, it's an interesting decision right here, Rick. It's your big uh, the first decision of the night. Do you want to give him fourth down or you want to move him back? I... Uh, my first decision is to get that man a new barber. <laughs> Well, gonna, it looks like then we'll take find out. Yeah, huh? I don't think there was much discussion about that. You want to push him back ten yard, the 10 be. yards from the spot, wherever it may be. And it's back to the 14-yard line. And now Conrad almost forced into a passing situation. Third down, 13. Get a lot of crowd shots early tonight. Chip must feel very alone in the truck tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Conrad to pass, he's got pressure, gets away from one man, now he's going to have to run the ball. Let's go with a pass towards the end zone, and somebody on the sideline makes the catch. Nice Andrew catch over Conrad there, too. Pass. Too bad he didn't have a uniform on and wasn't in bounds. So it's fourth down, and we'll see maybe a field goal attempt. I see Ralph Flores coming on to hold. What makes this pass hard is he's rolling right, he's a right-handed quarterback, he's throwing back across his body into the corner of the end zone with the win. So with all those variables going against you, the chances are you're not going to complete the pass. And You did see the nice catch, however. 
Well, but Thenius is going to come on and try a field goal, and this is going to be 28-yard line, make that a 38-yard, 39-yard field goal attempt for Omar Vinas. Flores puts it down, it's low, it has a distance, but it's well off to the right. No good, and the Rams hold here with 6-12 to go in the first quarter. No. The Dolphins just used, and they, they did come up with the ball. Sunset's number 44 on defense. Gerald Little outfought Vieira for that ball, and he comes up with it. And the Call Park Rams with the first turnover of the game. Nick, let's take a look at it from the ground level. Just never got the exchange from the center. And with the blitz on, they were they're, they're able to get early penetration, and the ball is laying there, and they jumped on it. And, Chance to cash it in here with 4.49 left in the first. And remember, the defense had spent a good six minutes on the field earlier. They were only out for maybe one or two plays, two or three plays, and now they're back out on the field again. Well, you're going to get an offside right here. I believe Alfonso Otero jumped. Officials time out on the field. Or they're, they're just not, didn't get the clock stars one or the other. Otero did move, and that's just about the time he blew the whistle. He might have just been getting his, a wider split. And it does look like a clock problem because he's, he's calling upstairs, and that's usually what it is. All right, they're going to consult with the replay official. That's what <laughs> yeah, it is. That's right. <laughs> we, want, we want to see if that was really a fumble recovery. So we've had our first first replay of the season here. <laughs> Actually, I think it is really a problem with the clock. Something about not being able to start the field, the clock from the field, so they may have to go to the scoreboard timer up top to keep it. That may be the problem. The uh, field level remote may not be working on it. See if Nick Belmonte was on the field, then maybe we'd know that. But Nick Belmonte's in the booth. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I'll be on the field later, though. Yeah, later in the season, not in the next couple of weeks, that's for sure. Well, I'll be there at halftime. Yes, you will. Going to interview the loveliest, loveliest trainer in Dade County. How's that for an intro? Well, they, they have a female uh, trainer, Coral Park, would probably take exception. <laughs> But you're right. 
And speaking of Nick Belmonte's interview, let's show you what's coming up at halftime. Oh, there it is. How about that? How about a lead in? Both bands will get a chance to see the Marching Coal Park Rams as well as the Sunset Knights. We have uh, an interview with uh, Jerry Hughes and Walt Frazier from the Carroll City Southridge game from last night. Reporter Tom Levy on hand. Of course, Nick will be doing his interview, and I'll have all the halftime statistics for you. Coming at halftime here on Sunday Sports. And I think we still have a problem with the clock. And it looks like it may be resolved. Andrew Condrat will have Bob Coleman and Louis LaFont as his running backs when play gets back into Action, First Alfonso down, Otero ten. will be the wide receiver to the near side. Omar Vinas is the flanker back. And Chuck Carl remains the tight end, and there he goes in motion again. Taking a page out of the Dolphins playbook with the shifting tight ends. And a good defensive play that time. Lafont making the carry, but knifing in to make the tackle is Alex Carter from the defensive tackle position. Carter got great penetration, sliced in between the guard and the tackle, and you'll see it right here. So Sunset going backwards after recovering the fumble. Ron Blas, the athletic director, uh, was telling me before the game his daughter's a cheerleader for Sunset, and he was concerned that our camera crew wasn't going to get shots of the, of the Sunset cheerleaders. I said, Ron, our guys would never miss a chance to shoot a pretty girl. Date a pretty girl, yes, possibly, but shoot one. Shoot one with a camera. <laughs> Take a look at this one one more time as LaFont gets inside. Good yardage. And then pick your Coral Park defender on that tackle. Got six yards out of it. Makes it third and seven, third and six. And we're down to 3.28 to go first quarter. Scoreless first quarter here at Tamiami Stadium. The Sunset Knights have the football. The Coral Park Rams on defense. Kondrat, with time, goes out in the flats for LaFont, and he dropped it. Not much to say about that one. Well, Fredo Leon slapped at it, and I don't know if that broke his concentration or what, but he just didn't hold on to the ball. Paul Park showing a seven-man front on that play. Not respecting the pass there. Well, now it's decision time. Do you go for it? Vinyas has already missed one from 39. This would be 50. Now, it looks like they're going to go, uh, even though the wind is at their back in the first period. Six yards is going to be a lot easier to, to get than a 47-yard field goal. Vinas goes up to the top of the screen as the flanker back, and the backs will be in the I formation this time. And we Still get a it. delay. Yep. Flag is thrown before the snap of the ball. And that changes your strategy entirely. There's Ernest Perkins, the man in gold with the blue shorts. I do not believe this is one of those delays of the game to get the punter more room to kick it out of bounds. <laughs> I don't believe that was it because fourth and six from the 30-yard line is a very legitimate chance for a first down. Here's Al Riveron, our referee tonight. Three minutes and four seconds to go, and now Vinas will set up in punt formation. And Coral Park will not respect the fact that uh, they're going to kick it deep as they only send one man and rush 10, and here comes the rush. Vinas has to hurry to get it off. The ball bounces into the end zone, and the Rams dodge a bullet there, Nick, as they fumbled, but the fumble doesn't cost them. Well, that's two bullets, or there's six in the gun. Who knows? But uh, the Coral Park Rams have done a good job here defensively in the first quarter. Now they got to get the offense cranked. It showed signs of moving the football when they first got it. Of course, the fumble turned the ball over. And the Rams get their second shot at it with David Vieira, the left-handed quarterback, and he's one of the bigger quarterbacks in the county. It's six foot three, 205 pounds. They'll have Kwame Vidal and Carlos Santana in the backfield. Vidal gets the ball, and the man with the initial hit that time on the Sunset defense is number 49, that would be Mike Gerard. Gerard kind of closed the gap, and it also closed the hole real quick. Number 98, Mike Savori was in there almost at the snap. He had read the play perfectly, or at least the snap count, and was in the backfield, although it was going away. Had it gone to his side, you would have seen some collision. Bobby. 
Carl Park doing some shifting now. Vieira going to get sacked by David Macy as he just blew through the offensive line. Well, it's starting to get dangerous here. You want to make sure you do everything right if you're Coral Park offensively. One thing you do not need is some kind of turnover this deep in your territory to change things around. And Coral Park calls timeout right here. We'll watch. Dave Macy go right through the double team block, no less, to get to David Vieira. Uh, pseudo double team. I think somebody missed his assignment right there, and you see Ernest Perkins going out there, and he's probably telling them the same thing. We don't want to make any mistakes deep and give away a cheap touchdown. Sunset Knights, on the other hand, they've dominated things in the early going. And when their offense comes back on the field, they'll be prepared as we saw a shot a little bit further, a little bit uh, earlier of them getting a new play drawn up for them. Next week here on Sunday Sports, Nick, you'll be handling the play-by-play. -play. It'll be tough for me to do it from the left coast as you do Sunset and South Dade from Harris Field. I don't know who's gonna be further away from Dade County or, <laughs> or, or the Dade County main area. Uh, of course, South Dade isn't Dade County, but that's about as far south as you're gonna get. Part of the flag corps for the Sunset Knights. They remind me to synchronize the swimming team there. Yeah, well, uh, I think that's what, Thursday night. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about the Olympics. All right, a third and 19, tough play for Carl Park, deep in their own territory. We'll see what David Vieira's gotten from Ernest Perkins. Fumble again, oh, and Sunset yeah, has come up there. with it, I believe, one more time. Oh my, my. Yes, they have. The one thing that we talked about, the one thing they didn't want to happen. Gerald Little comes up with a fumble. Oh, boy, I don't know if that's worse than having Freddy Krueger in your nightmare. Take a look at it one more time. Is Vieira having trouble getting the center snap? It goes right to the ground, and Vieira smothered. He had no chance of getting the ball that time, and Gerald Little recovers the fumble for her. The Sunset Knights. Sunset. A little yeah, chance he did have, as you saw on that replay, he had his hands on it, but the aggressiveness of uh, Sunset took it right out of his hands. First and goal just inside the 10-yard line. And Andrew uh, Condrat pitches out to Lewis LaFont, and a good defensive play that time by the Coral Park defense using the gang tackling style, and this time it's gonna cost them as we're gonna get a late hit in the middle of all of that. I will say this, in fairness to Coral Park, that whistle was very late. But after the whistle, however, there was still some contact, at least that's what the ruling was. Now you're not gonna be able to see it here, but this whistle comes in fairly late. There. It never appeared to go down entirely, so I, you know, arguments for it both ways. Ball is back at the 12-yard line, but then you'll get your half the distance to the goal penalty. Well, I think what happened, there was a little extracurricular stuff going on after that freeze frame that we showed that you didn't get to see, so I think that's where the penalty was thrown. It was well after the play, though. And the ball will be marked at about the six and a half yard line. And it'll make a first and goal at, a, we'll call it the seven yard line. Second down, and goal from the six. Kondrat goes to LaFont, LaFont following Coleman, sheds a tackler and gets into the end zone for the touchdown. Lewis LaFont gives Sunset a 6-0 lead with 58 seconds to go. Nick, we'll look at it one more time. Well, Lewis LaFont, he's their big ground gainer. Only man that scored last week for either of these two teams. Puts the first one on the board tonight. His second touchdown of the year. And the second touchdown for Sunset of the year. Now they're going for their first extra point of the year. Second. I mean, successful, I should say. Okay, Vinas to do the kicking. He puts it right through the uprights, and Nick, you're right. 
Vinas adds the extra point, and it's 7-0. Sunset will take one more look at the touchdown by Louis Lafont. He does a good job of shedding the tackler here at about the four-yard line. Got a great lead block right there that sprung him loose. That was Coleman, the fullback. Coleman leveled his man, put him on his back. Open the way for the touchdown, and you see it, 7 nothing. sunset on top. Well, Nick, that time Cole Park, uh, to use the, uh, I, I hate to use the dodging the bullet syndrome because we don't <laughs> want to talk about bullets and, and guns and violence, but uh, Cole Park shot themselves in the foot that time by fumbling deep in their own territory. Oh, no, no question. They called a timeout probably to get their heads on straight to avoid a mistake like that. And, and what happens? They, they do something that stupid, but... I believe the philosophy here is going to be the way it's been all year for Ernest Perkins. Let's forget about it. Let's go on and play this ball game. Believe me, it's only 7 nothing. It's not like it's uh, the end of the world. Right, and there's three quarters and 58 seconds of football left to go here. LaFont's carried the ball a lot for Sunset nine times uh, early on. Vinyas to kick off, and he sends it high and deep. It'll be taken by Ruiz at the nine-yard line, and Ruiz across the 20. And does... Just barely get it to the 25, and I think we may have had a face mask grabbing as Ruiz went down. A lot of Cole Park people may remember that name, Fernando Ruiz, from the baseball team. Pretty good uh, baseball player. Well, you got to love those baseball players that play football. It makes, I was it makes, them, makes them tough. You, you don't want to have those guys slide in you to break up a double play. Uh, Cole Park gets another break as they get 15 yards on top of this for the late hit. And that'll move the ball out in great field position for Cole Park, probably out to about uh, the 40-yard line or so. Just inside the 40-yard line is where Al Riveron, the referee, puts the ball down. And with 52 seconds to go, Cole Park has got pretty good field position. There's Lewis LaFont and his stats thus far in the game. Well, it's the fun, I believe, was leading the county and rushing at the end of the first week. Yes, he was. Let's see if Vieira can hold on to the ball. Fires one way high, intended for Derek Perez on the far side at about the 45-yard line. Seems to me that, that that play took a little bit too long to develop. It almost seemed like there was a problem there with the snap. He, he seemed like he had his hands down there quite a long time, picked it up, and kind of floated. That's a dangerous way to throw that pass to the outside. You want to put maybe a little more zip on that. I think one of the keys here is watching this center snap exchange between the center Carlos Mo Moyaneda and David Vieira. That's where the problem has been on the two fumbles for Cole Park. And Vieira tackled just as he hands off and Sunset's recovered their third fumble in the first quarter. Rick, this is going to be a very interesting replay because I, it looked to me like Vieira was tackled before he handed off. 91 for Sunset. Comes up with a football. That would be Ron Verona. And Nick will take a look at it right here. See if Vieira's knees are on the ground before he hands off. If that's true, he's down right there. And they were. They were down. You're right. The knees were down. That should not have been uh, allowed. That should have been a... a, a Dead ball right there. Well, they don't have the replay. No, not at all. Advantage. Oh, how many times do you see a guy on his knees handed off? That's true, too. <laughs> Take a look at it one more time. That knee, that right knee was down before he handed off. That ball should not have been uh, a turnover. Condrat throws to Alfredo Otero as we're back to live action as a penalty marker goes down at the 39-yard line. And uh, we may have a holding penalty here against Sunset. And that's the call. Illegal use of the hands against the Sunset Knights offensive squad. And there is no time left in the first quarter. We've reached the end of the first 12 minutes on the scoreboard clock, and the Sunset Knights lead the Coal Park Rams by a score of 7 to nothing. Louis LaFont with a 58-yard run, or make that a 7-yard run with 58 seconds left. And these are two teams that really, and I like to... The term you use, shoot themselves in the foot. Uh, 13 penalties for 108 yards last week for Sunset. 11 penalties for just under 100 yards last week for Coral Park. Now that's something you almost expect the first week, but 
coaches will tell you between the first and second week are probably the most crucial times in the season because that's when you most improve between the first time you go out there and the second time and they need to cut down on these penalties both teams sunset with 40 yards in penalties on four penalties and uh, this is lafont getting it and he is knocked out of bounds over there by by coral parks number 44 alfredo leone and Al andy sierra 27 and that play officially ends the quarter. And Sunset Knight fans have to be happy with that one as they've made it through the first 12 minutes and they're leading in this game. Rick, you hate to say things are crucial right here, but Coral Park has to come up with a defensive effort. They don't want this game to get, get out of hand this early. Well, uh, the defense has had the pressure on them since the opening kickoff, and the offense has done it to them, dropping the ball, putting it on the field three times, and three times Sunset's come up with it. They were able to, to escape the first time, couldn't the second time, and we'll see what happens here the third time. And you got to remember, Cole Park only has 35 players dressed. We found out five other players have been added since right. the last time we talked. And uh, there are going to be some tired football players on the defensive side of the field. There's Condrat talking to the offense here, trying to make an adjustment as time getting ready to be called back in. A little bit of confusion as to what play they may have called here. And people will tell you it's a lot tiring being the pursuer than the pursuee. Yeah. Second and 17. Condrat with a long count that time. And the Dan Marino uniform style quarterback can't get the ball to LaFont as LaFont had his feet taken out from under him. And he goes to the ground as the ball falls incomplete. Perez yep. playing defense. One guy went high, Derek Perez goes low, you're going to see. Boy, Perez really takes his feet out from under him. And I, t I tell you what, you go back to the huddle and you tell your quarterback, what are you trying to do, get me killed? Just leaving him uh, out there to, to dry. That's, that's a dangerous pass for, for a guy to go back and try to catch. Third down, 18. Condrat just hands off to LaFont, and LaFont gets the ball to the 42-yard line to see a loose ball, but the whistle had already blown. Sunset playing it safe there, and they'll prefer to pin the Coal Park deep, or offense deep in their own territory. Their defense has got to feel pretty confident that they can hold them, particularly in view of what happened in the first 12 minutes. Their defense is very well rested. They've probably been on the field tonight. And I like that little, little helping hand right there. That was after the play, that fumble, however. But a little helping hand there by the offensive oh, lineman. 11. And Perez comes up with a football, and Perez is nailed right at the 15 yard line. Rick, I was watching the punts before the, the football game and any punt going into that particular end zone, if it had any hang time on it at all, it was going nowhere. You're really punting into a capricious win here tonight and the best thing to do is punt that low punt. Actually, it was very effective. It still got him around the 16, 17 yard line. Capricious? Capricious. Have you been using Don Webb's vocabulary book again? <laughs> David Vieira will have Santana and Vidal in the backfield with him. And almost having trouble, and they fumble one more time. And guess what, folks, for the fourth time in a row. Got a flag, however. There is a flag on the field. You heard Al Keaton, the PA announcer, mention the flag is down. Mark Klein comes up with a fumble, holding against Coral Park, and again, Sunset given a golden opportunity here with the ball at the 11-yard line. Mark Klein on the fumble Wait, recovery. You hate sunset. to see a team 
lose a ball game because of things like this because these are just plays that just aren't executed. And that one never got started from the get-go as Vieira again having trouble with the snap, juggled it, then pitched it out, and then the ball was dropped Oh, watch. It's, it's pretty tough to, to pitch the ball when you got the linebacker on your back, too. Gerald Little all over him. But the pitch didn't really look that bad. And the call park defense comes back out onto the field again, the beleaguered call park defense. City of Miami, Tammy Parson to charge them rent. <laughs> I don't think some of the defense for Sunset's got their uniforms dirty yet. <laughs> it's like having a night off. Conrad will hand off to LaFont. LaFont sheds two tacklers, fumbles the ball, and Carl Park will get it back. Perhaps. The Rams have recovered. And they do. Getting up off the bottom of the pile with a football for Carl Park, it'll be Alex Carter. And Carter gets one for the defense. Alex Carter on the Five turnovers in the first 14 minutes of football here. This is a wild one. This isn't out of the Spalding guide, but still it's... It is it's, football. It's exciting. And you got to remember, it's only a 7 nothing ball game. Take a little, one more look at this. Here's the handoff to LaFont. And trying to shed blockers, blockers, he just lost the football. 9.55 to go before halftime. First and 10 from the 11. Vieira, the quarterback. Vidal and Santana, the running backs. And guess oh, what, folks? No. Oh, Paul Park got this one back, though. They might, they might want to think of going to the shotgun here, Rick. <laughs> you know, we laugh about it. That may be very true. Yeah. You couldn't really do any worse than this. Take one more look. This one from the top side angle, Nick. It, and, and no one hit anybody right there. It's just, I don't know if Vieira just isn't getting the handle or the snap is bad. It's really tough to tell. It's just the timing is it's just way off. This is not bloopers and bleepers, folks. This is uh, high school football. You do have the right channel. Hey, guess what? <laughs> guess what, folks? <laughs> yep. Shotgun formation for Coral Park. You, well, what else can you do? Whoa, Whoa. <laughs> almost. Vieira going to scramble out for 10, 15, and gets uh, pushed out of bounds at the 17-yard line. Well, when you've got to go to the shotgun in, in a situation where you, you maybe don't really want to pass, these things are going to happen. But Okay, now, Nick, you're you're the quarterback, Dave Vieira. Here's what it looks like to you. Well, I'm starting to run for my life here. I'm going to get a good hit. Check my shoulder pads, make sure they're still on after that hit. It's not all. Gain six yards, though. Got to go with it. Vieira, no time, still manages to get it off, and it's almost intercepted by Trevor Hanahan. Gerald Little, Little is living in the Coral Park backfield tonight. Vieira is going to wake up in the middle of the night and see 44 black and gold right in his face. I say he's going to be he's going to be like Freddy Krueger in his nightmare. Take one more look at it right off the sideline here and watch 44 come flying in. Somebody's going to have to get a handle on him before the night's up. Eight minutes, 46 seconds to go. Fourth and five. Coral Park's got to use a timeout. I don't think they have all their specialty team people out. And with 30, 35 players on uh, the roster, they I mean, got 10. <laughs> Hopefully it's not the punter that they need out there. Right? <laughs> Take a look at some of the upcoming events. That young lady will be watching here on Sunday Sports. The Jaguar Volleyball Tournament. Nick and Chris Prokos will be down at Dade South for that. And when I come back from uh, the left coast, we'll be uh, doing some high school football. Northwestern and South Miami and Southridge and South Miami. Those are two great football games. We'll have them for you right here on Sunday sports. Got to watch Southridge uh, against Carroll City last night. What a hard-hitting football game that was last night. 
That was a great ball game. And on the other hand, you got a game like South Miami, and they really got to flex their muscles last night against Southwest. Yep, you name the you name the aspect of the game, and it worked for them last night against Southwest. They beat them 41 nothing. Offense, defense, specialty teams, they all worked last night. Well, Coach Wilds has them playing 500 ball at Southwest, so it's pretty good. Well, you'll get a chance to see them next week. That's right. The Eagles and the Buccaneers next week. No, not Tampa Bay and Philadelphia. <laughs> Southwest could beat Tampa Bay. That was a real low kick that Perez got off, and he gets a great roll out of it. Look at this roll he's got all the way down to the 34-yard line. That win, what a help it was. Also keeping the ball low and getting, getting the rotation roll, kind of a lucky roll, but keeping the ball out of that win, as we said, because it really is just coming from all sides. You really you really don't know if you're with it or against it. Look at it. It's, that's, that's capricious, right? Capricious. Yeah. Well, he capriciously kicked the football 49 yards. <laughs> great great uh, punt, as it turns out. Got him out of a hole. Eight minutes and 30 seconds to go before halftime. And the Sunset Knight offense team for the umpteenth time here in the first quarter back out on the field. Condrat hands off to Bob Coleman. Cole Park gang tackling at the 36 yard line. Bob give him, Coleman, give Coleman a pickup of two. And Alex Carter again around the football. Another reminder that uh, once again, the Midway sports people have provided us with most valuable players t shirts to give out to the schools in the names of the players. And uh, you and I will be selecting these. And let's switch things around. Last week, we gave it to Chip to break the tie. If we have a tie, we'll give it to Chris Prokos, our graphics coordinator, to break the tie this week. That's right. He's a fellow Gator. He'll side with me. Oh, great. <laughs> maybe, we'll, maybe we'll go back down to the truck. Chip's from Pennsylvania. <laughs> Conrad to go deep. He's got a man there. What a great catch. That, oh, geez. George Malvasado. Had the ball, came down, rolled over, and the ball trickled out, incomplete. Malvestudo had the ball and just couldn't hold on to it. That would have been a great catch. Well, you almost have to treat this as if he did catch it, if you're the Sunset coach, because that was great concentration. Had it on the fingertips, and had he grown his nails a little bit longer, he might have had the first down, but it was a great effort, and the ground the Caused the incompletion. Malvestudo almost got on NBC's uh, sports machine for that great catch. Condrat with plenty of time. Going to go down the middle again. And Perez, does he catch it? No, it hit the ground. Perez slipped on the turf, tried to dive forward and come up with it. And he almost made a great play. He did. He, he was... Really taking his drop, and he didn't realize that the ball was kind of, he was the only guy around there. Kind of one of these, uh, wait a minute. It's coming towards me. 7.27 to go before halftime. It's a two-hopper to Venus. And Venus has it blocked. Carl Park blocks it. It'll be Carl Park ball. The man coming in to block it, number 40 for the Carl Park Rams, Carlos Rodriguez, with the block and the recovery. We invite you to stay tuned for more action here on Sunday Sports following station identification. Production assistance, staff wardrobe, and most valuable players awards have been provided by Midway Sporting Goods. Midway Sporting Goods, featuring a wide variety of the finest in team and individual sporting goods. Located in the Midway Mall in southwest Miami. Major funding for Sunday Sports is provided by grants from the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and the Florida Legislature. Sunday Sports is produced by WLRN-TV, Channel 17, Miami, Fort Lauderdale. Well, the kicking woes continue for the Sunset Knights. Second week in a row, they've had a punt block, Nick Belmonte. And when we talked to Steve Kahn, he said the, the kicking game was his big bugaboo. Well, they came right up the middle, blocked a punt, and you can't say enough for the uh, Coral Park defense. How many times have things really look grim? Uh, so, I mean, it's, we're only in the second quarter. Things have looked bad, so bad for Coral Park on a number of occasions. 
but the fact remains the defense is hung in. They're only down by seven and are on the 20 yard line of sunset. After this play, we'll tell you about our live sports updates that we do every week here on Channel 17. David Vieira is the quarterback again, and he'll have Vidal and Fernando Ruiz in the backfield now for the first time. And Vieira <laughs> just threw one at Ruiz, and Ruiz, being the good baseball player that he was, fielded the one hopper like he was going to turn to double play and turn the game, the, or the loss, I should say, into uh, not one as bad as it could have been initially. Well, he got the Baltimore chop pitch out. <laughs> right now about our live sports update Thursday nights at 7.57, 8.57, and 9.57 from around South Florida. Next week and the week after, Tom Levy will be doing the live updates, and he'll be at Dave North's uh, Tries Powell Stadium next week. At 9.57 has always been my favorite. Like that wrap-up report, huh? Well, back to the shotgun formation for Cole Park. Oh. And... The center sends one over Vieira's head, and Vieira gets tackled by one of his own guys, pushed into him by one of the Sunset players, and one nothing is going right for the Cole Park offense tonight, Nick. Well, you've gone to the shotgun. You've taken the regular center snap. I don't really know what's left. Maybe move Vieira closer to the center on the uh, mm, shotgun. See, Fernando Ruiz got pushed right into Vieira. That snap had some hang time on it. Well, folks, uh, we're going to have one of our longer ones. Third and 34. Five minutes and 40 seconds to go here before halftime. Third and 34. High formation to Ruiz, who's the backup quarterback. He wants to throw it. He's got a man down there, but it's the wrong uniform color, and it's intercepted by Sunset. Number 43 back there, the man who was the only man near the ball for the Sunset Knights is Juan Campbell. You know, I am not 100% sure that wasn't done intentionally. <laughs> like a punt? Why not? Flag is down on the field. Let's take a look at this one one more time. I, I'm i not totally convinced that this wasn't done intentionally. He, there's only one guy even near there, and he threw it right at him. He catches the ball inside the five. He falls down. They got it, it's, it's better than having a coffin corner kick. I guess that's the uh, new version of a quick kick. Throw the deep <laughs> interception. Penalty against Coral Park. Personal foul against Coral Park. Puts the ball at the 22 yard line. First and 10 for Sunset. 5.24 to go before halftime. 7 0 Sunset. Rick, you gotta remember it was third and 34, so. What do they got to lose? It, what, that's like punting on third down, like Charlie Tate used to do at the University of Miami. Yep. It, it could have been the same thing. Back in the three and eight years. That play really never got on track. Louis LaFont. Alex Carter there. Alfredo Leon is there. Kurt Diblin is there. Maybe I'm using my imagination too much on that play. Maybe it was just a straight interception. Loss of one. The way you described it though, you know, I mean, it's obvious to everybody who saw the play on replay too. Campbell's the only guy there. Five turnovers for Cole Park in the first half. Here's LaFont. LaFont following Candy Serta, the big offensive tackle. But Cole Park gets around him and they bring down LaFont at about the 24 yard line. Candy Serta really belongs on the Carroll City offensive line. He's 6'7, 290. <laughs> Walt Frazier, how did that one get away from you? Third down eight. Ball at the 24. He is a giant. There's Candy Serta right there. Condra is not in the game. That's Ralph Flores throwing to Omar Vinas. And Flores' pass is completed to the 32-yard line. Omar 
first down. So Steve Cron deciding that maybe uh, Ralph Flores should get a little work here at quarterback. And he completes one to Vinos as we'll look at it again. Nice little out pattern. As Venus wide open, hits him right in the hands. Gabriel Albello makes the tackle for Coyle Park. Three minutes and 50 seconds to go. Seven nothing sunset. Kondrat, or make that Flores rather hit just as he released the ball. And Venus, Venus just had it go through his hands. Same play other side. A little more pressure though applied. Coyle Park man down on the field. Tell you what, Nick, you really have to give credit to this Coal Park defense. As many times as the offense has turned the ball over, there's only seven points on the board. That's the amazing thing. There's Coral Park is still in this ball game as you look at one of their injured players. I believe that's Maxi Martinez. And Maxi's not moving too well right now. I hope everything's all right. With three minutes and 46 seconds to go here, we'll give you... Uh, Another update on what's coming up at halftime, but uh, Maxie's in a lot of pain right down on the field. Maxie Martinez for Cole Park, and uh, Ernest Perkins, the man kneeling nearest to us, the head coach of the Cole Park Rams. And again, another reminder coming up at halftime here on Channel 17. We'll take a look at the Cole Park and the Sunset Marching Bands in performance. Reporter Tom Levy spoke with uh, Southridge coach Jerry Hughes and Walt Frazier, the Carroll City coach. We'll hear their comments following the 8-0 Carroll City victory last night. And Nick Belmonte will be talking to the Sunset trainer, and I'll have the halftime statistics. <laughs> you know, go ahead, let's hear it. Just clean it up. We left Nick speechless for one of the few times of all time, folks. Uh, things have changed since I've been in high school. <laughs> Classes are longer, you know what I mean. LaFont is wrapped up in the backfield. Alex Carter's played quite a game on defense tonight, Nick. Mr. Carter is having himself a whale of an evening. Take a look at this one from the ground level. Carter fights off the blocker, gets in, and uh, he's there about the time the handoff gets there. When you say fights off, it wasn't much of a fight. He just beat the blocker to the punch, got in the backfield. Something that Gerald Little's done a couple of times on the other side. Third and 13 and 313 on the clock. I think I'll go bet one three in the lottery. <laughs> Those are two of my bet three numbers or cash three numbers. What the heck, it benefits education. Here's LaFont one more time. Carlos Rodriguez, as well as Alfredo Leon in on the tackle there. Sierra and Leon on the tackle. There's some of the Sunset assistant trainers getting things ready for uh, halftime perhaps. Venus just gets that one off, and it goes over the head of uh, Ruiz, and I think he did touch it. He'll have to pick it up the 27-yard line, then slips and falls, and a late flag goes flying as well. Maybe a face mask penalty will be tacked onto the end of this. We'll just double check. It looks like that's what they're signaling, Rick. And the way Ruiz is pointing, that may indeed be it, as Al Riverone will tell us right now. Okay, that, that's a new penalty this year. That's a, an illegal block to the head. Okay, it's a, either a headbutt or a hand pushed into the helmet. Illegal. Well, there you I heard believe, it. I believe the term is called headbutting. I didn't want to use that term, but uh, to be point blank, that's what it is. It's using your helmet to make the tackle. A legal helmet contact is with Al Keen, who is also an umpire and a referee, uh, termed it in his public address. Two minutes and 20 seconds to go here before halftime. 7-0 Sunset. Their offense has been on the field for about 90% of this game as Cole Parks turned the ball over five times. And the Rams will shift back into the uh, shotgun formation, see if they've worked on lowering the snap. 
got a little bit slower there, but it got to Vieira. He's in some trouble now. Gets the ball off just as he's hit and hit hard over there by 98 Mark Savori for Sunset. And he was bearing down on him the whole time, and Vieira had to really hustle to get it off. Good job of coverage by the Sunset backfield. He did have time to get rid of it. Everyone was covered. Vieira had to scramble for his life, but the line did a good job at that time for uh, Coral Park. Second and 10, 159 on the clock. Stopped with the incompletion. Snap gets to Vieira, didn't have to jump that time. And Ruiz just plain old dropped that one. That was right in the bread basket. I think I give him an error on that one. Well, he fielded the, one, he fielded the hard ball, but uh, missed the simple one. Maybe he had the trouble Mike Greenwell had uh, against the Yankees the other night out in left field. Boy, he's dropping balls all over the place out there. Yeah, that was back on Thursday night. He overran a ball. Ruiz will come back to the huddle and said the light was in my eyes. I think we may see Carl Park in this uh, shotgun formation a lot here. Floor, uh, and it is caught by Derek Perez from David Vieira at the 20-yard line. You better believe it. Great concentration. Caught it right in stride. And had, had a foot in. That was a correct call. He was in bounds. Derek Perez on a 34-yard pass play, and Vieira got plenty of time that time. That's, what, that's the key right there, Rick. Plenty of time. That ball is put right on the money. Good concentration and a great catch by Perez. And you only need one foot in bounds in high school football. Again, the shotgun formation. Best field position of the night for the Rams. 20-yard line of Sunset. It's first and 10. Vieira again with time. This time goes for the end zone for Perez. And he can't quite get it. There was some pushing and shoving back there going on as well, Nick. Back on the coverage, John Leva for Sunset. Just kind of ran out of real estate in the corner of the end zone. Vieira showing a strong arm. Really didn't have his man open right there. Good coverage by Sunset. 142 on the clock. And Carl Park has it at the Sunset Night 19 yard line, just inside the 20. Rams will stay with what's got them going here so far. Even though they're going back in tight, I'm looking for them to throw the ball again, Nick. But not on this particular one as delay is caused. They took too long to get the play off. Well, confidence-wise, Rick, they got to feel good about throwing the football right now. We were down on this part of the field before the ball game, and, and we saw the, the wind was angling into that corner of the end zone, which would be to the lower part of your screen on the left side. And Vieira has showed he's got a strong arm. The key here is to give him time and make a good center exchange. Vieira to pass for the end zone. He's got Perez tipped away at the last second by Trevor Hunahan. And Perez gave it a gallant try but couldn't come up with it. The timing of that play was excellent. Uh, Hanahan just stuck up a hand and saved them a touchdown right there. What can you say? Hanahan, six foot two, used all of it that time to mess up the play for Coral Park, and it's coming right at us here. He timed his jump perfectly. Perez ran a good route. It's right where that ball was intended. Kwame Vidal comes in with a play for Coral Park right at the last minute. And now Vieira wants a timeout here as things are really confused. 
They had Perez line up as a backfield player that time. I think the uh, the play may have been designed for Cole Park to set up tight and then break to the shotgun and break maybe Perez out of the backfield. There's your halftime interview. There's Debbie Fries, so I said trainer. He's been begging to get on our show for years now. We finally granted her her wish. Oh, yeah? At what cost, though? I'm okay, Mom. <laughs> Mark Klein telling Mom he's okay. I like it. She puts it on too good, it doesn't come off. That's the problem. 136 to go before halftime. Look at a good sunset crowd here on the west side. Win, lose, or draw. The Sunset Knights have always drawn well here at Tamiami Stadium and wherever they take the football team. Good fan support for the football squad. Nicole Park has gotten their play straightened out. And we'll see what David Vieira sets up. Going to the gun. Well, everybody's moving around there. Now, Orlando Perez, the uh, left tackle, I believe, number 75, is the first guy to jump. Well, the momentum seems to have stopped cold for Coral Park here. They got a uh, delay penalty, now an illegal procedure penalty following that big 34-yard pass play. Can't stand prosperity. Five-yard penalty, illegal procedure. Third down, 20. Out of the gun. Vieira with time goes for Perez and overthrows him in the end zone. Intended for Perez, guarded by one Campbell. Just didn't give him enough time to get under. That's a very difficult pass, and he almost made that play. It's coming right at you if, if you're a secondary player in the defense on this replay. Now Vieira's going to get the time right here. He's going to roll to his throwing hand side. Mm. That is really close. Well, this will be about 47 yards, 48 yards. Nelson Arbalea, 5'6", 141-pound kicker, gets it up. It's high enough, long enough, and it is just wide to the left. Had the distance, and he still had another 10 yards on it, but just hooked it. Well, it had a lot of leg on it, as you said. It didn't miss by much. It just tailed left at the end. And the score remains. Sunset 7, Coral Park nothing, with 1 minute and 26 seconds to go before halftime. Take one more look at the uh, field goal here, Nick. You'll see. He's going to get the leg into it. Slight breeze at his back, but I don't know if that mattered. It just tailed off to the left on that shot there. It looked good <laughs> because you didn't see the other crossbar, but trust us, it did go left. Middle screen for Conrad. He goes to Bob Coleman, and the Coral Park Rams there to stop him at the 27-yard line. 1.16 in the clock, continuing to tick down towards halftime. Getting up off the bottom of the pile for Coral Park. Number 15, Gabriel Albello. Number 14, also in there for the Car Park Rams on defense, Greg Naranjo. He dumps the pass out in the flat. He knows that they're dropping with uh, a minute left in the first half. That area should be open for the next few plays. 50 seconds and counting. And Condrat, make that Flores, who's in again. Intended for LaFont, and we're going to get an interference call there. Well, I don't know if he's going to interference. It's going to be one of those uh, legal contact deals that we just saw. 
It, it looked as if that ball had no chance of being caught, and I don't know if that's a consideration in high school football. It isn't, he's going to call it interference. All right, let's take a look at it, see if we can pick it up here on uh, the replay. Well, it's Derek Perez that hits him, but it looks like that ball is, is past him when, when that happens. The penalty will cost Coral Park 15 yards, move the ball to the 40 two yard line left full park offense the score is still only seven nothing yeah. i will say this that ball was not catchable take one more look at it sunset calls a timeout here i would i believe this ball is overthrown oh yeah, yeah sure it, it is well past him however the flag is thrown in his moot and the defense has to react to this situation now. First and 10 at the 42-yard line and 41 seconds to go. And Coach Ernest Perkin has got to be uh, wondering about his defense in that how much more can they take? They've been out on the field a good portion of this first half. Well, if they can hang on for 41 more seconds, they're going to get themselves a little rest. Perkins uh, conferring with the staff. And right next to Ernest Perkins, there's Nelson Arbalea. The man had just missed on that long field goal attempt for Cole Park. Getting a, uh, a psych-up job here. Probably a little discouraged that he missed that field goal. Well, there's nothing to be ashamed of. He just missed a 47-yard field goal for a high school football player. That's pretty darn close. I believe thus far Joe Allison of uh, American has the longest field goal in the county this year. I think that was 45 yards this week. Joe Allison doing double duty for American place kicking and quarterbacking. Flores to pass. He's going to get clobbered. Ralph Flores tackle attempting. Carlos Rodriguez from the defensive end. Somebody missed him entirely. I don't know if play action was the best thing to do right there with the clock running. I, I don't think you're fooling anybody with the play action, but they try it. Well, I'm sorry, that is not, that's not Rodriguez, but 48 for the Coal Park Rams, and that would be Ramon Uriarte, and he really pasted Flores, and uh, this time Venus can't hold on to it at the 40-yard line, and J.C. Ramos drops back into coverage to, to uh, make sure things don't get too far there. Uriarte or Yerusha, or however he pronounces it, that played before, he did blow through. He's going out of the game right now. Third and 19. Rick, there's a question. 12 seconds left. You just drop everybody. And this is a no-brain call right here. You just maybe rush three. Just drop everybody. Call Park setting up with a three-man line. And they go with a handoff to Lewis LaFont. And LaFont across the 45 to the 47-yard line. J.C. Ramos there to make the stop, and we have reached the end of the first half with the score. Uh, wait a minute, we got a, uh, I think we got a flag down. We've reached halftime, and there is no flag. They, Sunset called timeout, the referee acknowledged it, and then he realized there was no time on the clock. That was what happened. Well, Nick, I guess the story here in the first half is turnovers. Five for Cole Park, one for Sunset, and only seven points out of all of that. And he also, all the story in this ball game is Coral Park is in the posture to possibly win a football game. It's seven nothing at halftime. They're down a touchdown. Ernest Perkins, uh, I'm sure, you know, could be in a better position. Could be in a lot worse, com comparatively to the way they played in the first half, as you said, with all the turnovers. Very easily, this game could have been 21 nothing or 28 nothing right now with all those Coral Park mistakes. But they hung in there, seven nothing. And in Sunset, what can you say about them? They've shown signs of moving the football, but they need to start cashing it in. Otherwise, the Coral Park Rams are going to build up some confidence, and you may see the upset. Well, you're going to have two distinct conversations going on in these half times. The first comment is going to be on Coral Park. They've got to be pleased with their defense. The other part of the conversation is that Steve Cron has got to be pretty upset with his Sunset offense. They've been out on the field the majority of the first half, and they've only been able to put seven points on the board. They've stopped themselves with rather inconsistent plays and a lot of penalties thus far in the game as well, and that's been a real hurting factor 
for the Carl Park uh, for the Sunset Knights. The Carl Park Rams, we mentioned, with only the uh, 35 players that are dressed, they've got to get the offense back on the field and keep them on and give the defense a little bit of a rest here. Right now, let's go down to the field and we're going to give a listen to the Coal Park Rams marching band.
Our halftime guest this week is the Sunset Trainer, and you heard Rick refer to her as the prettiest trainer in Dade County and probably the shortest trainer in Dade County, Debbie Freeze. And, and Debbie, I'll, I'll, I'll get down here so you can, all right, now. Debbie, as a trainer for, for Sunset High School, you go through a lot of things, probably more so in, in the football season, getting these guys ready. What are the things you can tell us as far as your job, some of the things you do, and possibly are, are there ways to actually help the trainers out there? Uh, we definitely appreciate all the help that we get from, especially our strength coaches. You know, if we don't have an athlete that's flexible and strong, then we know for sure that they're you know, going to become injured at a much higher rate. Uh, we appreciate also all the help that parents give us, the cooperation. Many times the athlete does not like to tell us when they're injured, so we have to rely on parents calling us and tell us. And one of the things that we would really hope that all the parents feel comfortable in contacting the trainer at whatever school that they're at. Take us through a normal night tonight. How did you prepare for this game? Uh, just some of the duties that you had to go on, go through tonight. Okay, game preparation actually starts the day before the game when we start with our walkthroughs, getting all of our tape prepared for the game day. Uh, during eighth period, which is the last period of the day at our school, we start with treatments. We start again with treatments at 4.15 with all of our pregame taping. We tape from 4.15 until 6 o'clock, which then we start and load up the bus which we usually bring about six ice coolers, all the extra equipment, um, anything that we think that we might need. Basically, we move our training room out into the field. And then whatever happens out here, you're ready for that. Yes, you know, we have a doctor on each sidelines tonight. Um, Dr. Cabrera is our team physician. Dr. Torres is Coral Park's team physician. And they've just been super working with Easter Seals and helping us out. So they take care of all the serious problems. We tape. Um, I have a great student training staff mm -hmm. that takes care of all the little minor things, you know, the bumps and bruises and cuts. And, you know, and they do just a super, super job. And then I have a, a super assistant as well and then a student um, that's working with us from FSU as well. In light of uh, the recent, uh, I guess, uh, findings that we read about it in the Herald, uh, Dr. Fernandez, superintendent of Dade County Schools, said that he wants to make athletic training a priority. How do you think that's going to benefit the, the overall athletic department in the high school? Well, he's also, you know, along with making sports medicine a priority, safety and rehabilitation. The rehab's been a big problem in the past with the lack of facilities in the school and a lack of people just to be involved in it. Um, with the hiring of the assistant athletic trainers in most of the schools now, that's been a definite step forward. Easter Seals, along with doing the workshops, you know, yesterday, in fact, we had another workshop. You know, they're working really hard. You know, Dr. Fernandez seems to be placing some emphasis on it, and we hope that he continues to do so. And Debbie, if I twist my ankle going up to the press box for the second half, I know you'll be right there to tape me up. Thanks for stopping by. Debbie Friesen does a fine job as a trainer at Sunset High School. And now let's go to a new feature on Sunday Sports, the Halftime Report with Tom Levy. Mental mistakes on a kicking game. Hurt us. Hurt us. Gave us poor field position. But... Uh, Take nothing away from Carroll City. They're a good football team, but I'd sure like to meet them down the road when, when we're a little bit more established offensively. That's all. But I give take my hats off to the defense again. You got that's the only thing about defense. You got to defend a hundred out of a hundred plays. You let up one play and they score on you. You know, offense you can be like, you know, you can do bad to hold in just one game, one play. The one thing that was uh, a big factor for us was the fact that we were able to control the football in the third quarter. South Ridge has an explosive offense, and uh, we were able to keep the ball away from them. That's one factor. And secondly, uh, another factor was the fact that uh, we did get the opportunity to break the play earlier, and uh, that was a big play for us. And then the safety down here was a big play because at that point we were only leading 6-0, and uh, a touchdown and an extra point could have uh, turned the ball game around. Those were the comments of Jerry Hughes, the Southridge coach, uh, rather disappointed coach after last night's 8 nothing loss to the Carroll City Chiefs. Walt Frazier respecting the Southridge Spartans. And I have a sneaking suspicion that uh, come around the day after Thanksgiving when playoff time comes, you'll see both of those teams wrapped up in the postseason. Just my personal thoughts. Right now, let's go down to the Sunset Knights marching band, and then we'll come up and do some halftime stats and then a special baseball announcement.
Let's take a look at the halftime statistics. Right now, very telling. Coral Park only two first downs and minus 24 rushing yards. Total of 20 yards. They have not had good luck in the first half. That is for sure. Sunset dominating the offense, but yet they only have seven points on the board. Vieira two for 10 for Coral Park. Uh, or make that two for nine with uh, uh, Ruiz throwing that one interception. The Sunset Condrat went three for eight. Then they brought Flores in and he only went two for five. So Sunset trying to get the offense going. The big success in the game thus far has been Louis LaFont. 16 carries, 56 yards and a touchdown. Coleman with 24 yards on three carries. And the receiving stats look like this. Coral Park, uh, Derek Perez two for 44 and Omar Venus three catches for 20 yards for the Sunset Knights. The uh, South Florida College Baseball Umpires Association will be sponsoring a uh, on-the-field clinics during the month of October and November at the University of Miami, Florida International University, Barry University, Miami-Dade South. So if you'd like to become a baseball umpire, even though this really isn't the season for baseball, there's a lot of fall baseball going on. If you're interested in becoming a baseball umpire, you can go to FIU, University of Miami, Barry, and uh, Dade South Field, and you can get instruction from George Maloney, who's got over 30 years of professional experience, as well as the South Florida College Umpires Association. They'll be meeting Monday night at September 19th, tomorrow night at 7.30 at the Tamami Park Recreation Building. If you're interested in uh, gaining experience at all levels of uh, umpiring, and particularly college, you can call Al Keen at 382-2872. So that's uh, the South Florida College Umpires Baseball Association. They'll be meeting tomorrow night, September the 19th at 7.30 at Tamiami Park Recreation Building. For more information, again, you can call Al Keen at 382-2872. And you can get some professional instruction from George Maloney, who's had over 30 years in professional umpiring experience. Well, after the uh, resounding bang, we'll come back with the second half kickoff in just a second. You're watching Sunday Sports on WLRN-TV Channel 17, Miami, Fort Lauderdale. Production assistance, staff wardrobe, and most valuable players awards have been provided by Midway Sporting Goods. Midway Sporting Goods, featuring a wide variety of the finest in team and individual sporting goods, located in the Midway Mall in Southwest Miami. Major funding for Sunday sports is provided by grants from the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and the Florida Legislature. Sunday sports is produced by WLRN-TV, Channel 17, Miami, Fort Lauderdale. Coral Park will be getting the kickoff here to start the second half. Remember, they declined the option in the first half. Derek Perez and Fernando Ruiz will go back deep for Cole Park. They're standing at the 10-yard line. Mark Klein will kick off for Sunset. And the second half underway as we get a nice high, long kick. Perez takes it at the six. Sheds one tackler, but cannot shed the second one. And for Sunset, Juan Campbell makes the tackle inside the 20. Ball will be placed at around the 17-yard line. And let's see what kind of adjustments the Cole Park offense has made. First thing I'm sure that Ernest Perkins told them is don't put the ball on the ground anymore. And let's see if we can get the ball back to Vieira as well. Be interesting, Nick, to see if they go with a shotgun or come right out of the uh, tight formation, which is what they're going to do here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Right. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> what else don't you want <laughs> or want to have and can't have? Vieira from the shotgun. He goes outside with it. David Vieira's pass is complete. Mariano Rodriguez. Mariano Rodriguez on the reception. Kurt Dietrich and Don Lane. Kurt Dietrich, tackle. his counterpart with the same number, making the tackle. This guy wanted a little privacy there. I guess. Second down, seven. All right, that was a play late. They're going to go from the tight formation now.
Fernando Ruiz busts his way up across the 25 to the 26 yard line and a penalty marker goes flying into the end of that play. 10 minutes, 35 seconds to go. Take a look at Ruiz running this one one more time, Nick. Well, let's see what kind of surge Coral Park gets. Apparently the linebackers dropping back respecting the pass, resulting in a good gain for for the Rams. Well, we've had our first injury for Sunset, and it's a painful one. Boy, it looks like a it looks like a knee. I don't care if you're a player or a cheerleader, it hurts just the same. Vieira hands off to Ruiz. Big hole for Ruiz across the 35 to the 37 yard line. First down and 10 for the Coral Park Rams, third one of the game. Little delay on the handoff, which, which uh, froze the linebackers again. Seven yard gain, first down. And Coral Park doing a good job, but uh, comes out throwing in the shotgun, runs two Ball successive plays, and really has sunset guessing right here, Rick. Well, let's see if they guess right this time on a first and 10. Maybe we'll see Vieira throw the ball this time. Sunset showing a five-man front. And Nick Ruiz had, I mean, uh, Vieira had trouble with the exchange again as he juggled it. Ruiz, the ball carrier, maybe a yard on the play. As you said, that play didn't look pretty as it was developing. It slowed up the, uh, the progress. Now you're getting yourself into a uh, passing situation. There's Steve Cron, the head coach of the Sunset Knights, uh, not wearing the headset, chewing the tobacco all on my buddy right here on the right. Mr. Oh, Bell gum. Buddy. That's gum. Oh, yeah, right. Uh-huh. I'm drinking seltzer water tonight. Out of the shotgun, Vieira throws over Gerald Little and completes it. Pass is complete to Freddie Neira at about the 38-yard line. It didn't get a whole lot. It'll be about a third and six for Coral Park here with eight minutes and 20 seconds to go third quarter. Still 7-0 sunset. The only score of the game coming with 58 seconds Remaining in the first quarter, Louis LaFont got a seven-yard touchdown run. Omar Vinas's extra point was good. Yeah, official timeout. He had an equipment problem here, and they're taking care official of it. Official timeout on the field. And it was corrected quickly. There's a shoulder pad strap that came loose. Ruiz and Santana in the backfield shift into the I formation, and we're going to get a delay penalty, I think. Play is thrown before the snap of the ball. Offsides against the defense, and that'll make it real close to a first down play here. Third and maybe about a half a yard or so. Well, that'll change the play calling for Cole Park. We may have had a pass on that play as uh, the way Vieira was breaking back. Now we may see uh, Ruiz carry the football. And you definitely open up your options here. You got Vieira. He's about ha halfway off the field as he's He's looking at the referees, and, it, and it's going to be a. Looks like they have the changes. Third down and inches. <laughs> no. Five yards. Chain chain start, there you go. Third down and chain links. Third down and one. Foot short. First down. Now that's closer than the foot. I'll guarantee you that. Have there. to put the binoculars out and uh, check out the yard marker. What do you think, Nick, about uh, eight or nine chain links for the first down? A tidge and a tad. Smidgen. 7.53 to go third quarter. 7 nothing. Sunset over Call Park. Ruiz gets the first down, falls forward to about the 43-yard line. 
And Carl Park now with two first downs here in the second half, and Ruiz comes up lipping badly, and he'll come out of the game. That hurts not only the offense, but the defense, as Ruiz is going both ways tonight. Kwame Vidal checks into the lineup to replace the limping Ruiz, and he'll be joined by Carlos Santana in the backfield. Freddie Neyra splits out his wide receiver at the bottom of the screen. Perez up at the top. Vieira looking, gets the ball off, and it's going to be picked off by Sunset, making the interception Chris Mike Sell. Turnover number six for Coral Park. And here we go again. And that time. Now let's go back to that first pass that Ruiz threw back in the first half. Uh, you were talking uh, to the Coral Park. Team, and uh, they seem to think that that was designed. Yeah, I asked the defensive coach. He goes, I'm not really sure, and he kind of winked at me like, uh, but I think, it, you know, it was. Now, you're going to see this. Does it get deflected here? That's what we need to find out. And I believe it did. It started to, really started to wobble. Either came out of his hand wrong or got deflected. Back to live action. This is uh, Campbell, or I'm sorry, Coleman with a football across the 30 to the 32-yard line. Bob Coleman. Alex Carter again in on the tackle. Helped out over there by uh, 54 for the Carl Park defense, Michael Coppola. And with 6.40 to go here and counting in the third quarter, Nick, we ought to start thinking about Midway Sporting Goods MVPs because at the end of the game, you and I will be voting on MVPs, one for each team. And Midway Sports will be getting us uh, a shirt to give to the school in the name of the players, and the players will get to wear it very proudly. Kondrat gets the ball off. It's caught right at the 39-yard line. Andy Sierra, the man that uh, hit Carl Chuck on the play. Good all-around play right there, cut in the middle of the seam of the zone. There's Steve Cron, rather anxiously looking on. He's hoping that the offense will get on track, put some more points on the board. And they're moving the ball from uh, 20 to 20 or 30 to 30 anyway. They just can't get it past that. Kondrat hands off to Lafon. He squirts into the secondary across the 40 to the 44 yard line. Andy Sierra on the tackle. Sierra again along the tackle. Timeout is called by the referees here as we have another Coral Park player down, and this is what. We were talking about in pregame, Nick, if they get too many players hurt, they're in a lot of trouble. They got a lot of guys going both ways tonight, and they only have 35 suited up, which usually means out of 35 dressed, you're probably only playing somewhere in the 20, so close to 25, 26. And you look at the passing yard comparison, Coral Park not that far ahead, 50 to 36, but Coral Park having to throw the football tonight. All right, the running game for Cole Park not working at all, as we saw in our halftime stats, 24 yards in the negative for the Rams. Was coupled with only nine yards last week. Mm. And Kondrat to pass again, gets the ball off, and it is in and out of the hands of LaFont on the far sideline, and we're gonna get a late hit called on Cole Park on the sideline, Nick. That really hurts. Play was already out of bounds, and one of the Coral Park players came over a little bit late, and they called the flag. It's Renio Lopez that hit him, or Renault Lopez. That's the in vogue thing these days, I guess. And the haircut is, too. I think chewing your fingers <laughs> is the in vogue thing I'm talking about. Very good. 15-yard penalty against Coral Park sets up Sunset in great field position now following the 15-yard penalty. They're at the Coral Park 40-yard line with 5.07 to go third quarter. 7-0 Sunset, only score in the game. Louis LaFont touchdown, seven-yard run, 58 seconds left in the first quarter. Omar Vinas extra point, and that's been it. That's been it, but there's been a lot of excitement in between with all the turnovers we've had. LaFont, the carrier, across the 40 to the 37-yard line. Andy Sierra, as well as Alfredo Leone on the tackle. 
Four minutes, 40 seconds to go. Condrat remains the quarterback. Lafont and Coleman, the splitbacks. Pass is caught by the tight end, Carl Chuck. Nick, he's catching the ball with his knee on the ground. Yeah, he really is. You almost can't fault the uh, defensive player because as he catches it, he comes down to a knee, and you really can't stop your momentum if you're the defender. Let's take a look at this one. Uh, Right watch, watch Conrad's footing go here before he passes the ball. Watch, he's going to slip. And he catches it with the knee down. That plays dead at that point, but you can't expect Alfredo Leon, who made that tackle, to stop on a dime because his knee's down. Here's Coleman on the carry again. Coleman finds some extra yardage down to the 23-yard line, and he found a good hole off the right side, Nick. And another call park player down. You know, Ma Maxi Martinez, uh, number seven. Now watch him come knifing through. Well, he didn't pick it up there, but he almost tackled the quarterback before the pitch. And a good run right there, eight yards. And you got another Coral Park player down. And I'm not sure who the Coral Park player is. Well, now I do know who it is. It's Fernando Ruiz again, trying to come back on the field after spraining the ankle on offense. And he landed funny on the same ankle. The way they're rubbing the calf, it looks like, if you, as you look at the stat of Louis LaFont, and congratulations to him for getting the school record. And it looks like it's, it's a cramp kind of situation. They're, they're rubbing the calf. Now, you remember uh, in that uh, Miami Dolphins-San Diego Chargers game, same thing happened to Kellen Winslow for San right. Diego where he had to, the cramps uh, all game long and he had, was helped off the field and they'd come back in the game and he was helped off the field and he'd come back in the game. Well, that's a show of sports and shifts. He's keeping his fingers crossed for him. And that was the enemy. And Rick, the way he's walking off the field, it's definitely a cramp. It's cramping up now as he's walking off the field. I didn't mean to laugh, but if you ever had that happen to you, you more, know. It's, more of a it's, frustrating it's, thing. They're going to hold up play while they attempt to get Ruiz off the field. It's going to be a slow process because he cannot walk very fast at all. There's Andrew Condrat. 3.50 to go. Clock has started. Condrat with a short drop, going to air it out for Vinas for the touchdown. But Rick, there's a flag on the play that might all come back. And the way the Cole Park defense is reacting, it will come back. Ineligible receiver or illegal participation? Regardless of what the penalty is, it was a nice play. Let's take a look at it one more time, Nick. I don't want to pick out the culprit here because I don't want to embarrass anybody. We can't even see it there anyway. But a great throw, a great catch. The man was wide open. Well, Sunset has scored two touchdowns in 1988. Uh-oh. We saw him on that play. We won't mention any names, but his number was in the 60s. There you go. <laughs> How's that for being diplomatic? God, he was wide open, too. <laughs> First and 15. Ineligible receiver, Coleman's gonna make it up, and Morris, he's gonna go for the touchdown. 27 yard run, touchdown, Sunset. Coleman, 27 yard touchdown, and it's 13 nothing, Sunset. Let's look at it one more time, Nick. A little off tackle play right here. Big hole, breaks it outside, turns the corner. Good blocking on the, in, on the right side. And the pursuit was just not there for the Rams. And a big touchdown. Oh, really. Vinas to kick. Flores to hold for the Sunset Knights on this attempt of at the extra point. Vinas gets it up and oh. uh, it didn't make it. 
Did not clear. And guess what? Another Cole Park player down on the field getting up slowly. Gerardo Bitrago gets up rather slowly. Sunset holds a 13-0 lead. Let's take one more look at the touchdown by Coleman. Now watch the blocking right there. It's a trap play. No one near him. No one near him but our handheld cameraman down on the sideline, John a, Rudolph. The closest guy to him. He went in untouched. And Cole Park again finds themselves uh, in a lot of trouble here, Nick. 13-0 with only about 15 and a half minutes of football left. And their offense has turned the ball over six times. They've got to find the right connection somehow. There's Mr. Coleman, and there's his stats on the night, and they are good stats. Six carries, 67 yards, and a touchdown run of 27 yards. <laughs> Not even a high mom or dad, huh? Just thumbs up. We're winning. Leave me alone. Get out of here. But I love you. That's right. That's Mark right. Klein to kick it off. There's Derek Perez waiting for it deep. And uh, the man with the cramp problem in the, in the uh, calf area, Fernando Ruiz is down there with him, but this will be Perez at the seven. Perez loses the football. Sunset's got it. That's number 32 for the Sunset Knights. Alex Avello gets the seventh turnover for the Sunset Knights on the night. Well, Mr. Momentum is come to our side of the field, and you're going to see this turnover right here. Take a look at Perez trying to give the extra effort, and the ball just squirts out of his hands. Johnny on the spot, 32, Alex Avello. Here's Condrat in the offense again. Going to go for it all. And incomplete. LaFont got tangled up with one of the defenders back there for Coral Park. Incomplete. Andrew Condrat incomplete. Intended to Lewis LaFont. And we did check at halftime. I was talking to one of the referees. If the pass cannot be caught, you can still have interference in high school. That rule does not apply to high school. So on a pass interference play, it does not matter if the ball is catchable or not. And the injury bugaboo again to call apart. I wonder if it, no, it's not Ruiz. Ruiz is standing up in the huddle. Can't pick out the player. Tell you what we will do, though, is we'll tell you about next week here on Sunday Sports. Nick Belmonte and Chris Prokos will be down at Harris Field in Homestead as the Southwest Eagles will be hosted by the South Bay Buccaneers and sophomore quarterback Calvin Burdick. And uh, if that name rings a bell for you South Bay Rooters, it should because he is the son of Cal Burdick, who was the former South Bay football coach down there a couple years back. And he's a sophomore, Nick. Just a child by uh, high school standards. Speaking of uh, child by high school standards, a uh, pretty good child we saw last night, or Thursday night, we should say, in the uh, Carroll City game, 14-year-old uh, Ed West in his 73-yard uh, touchdown run against Southridge. That's got to encourage Walt Frazier. Here's Stephen Hurst for Sunset, getting across the 25 to the 23-yard line following the fumble recovery. It's in the water over there at Carroll City. Is that what it is? It's in the water. Well, whatever they're doing, they're doing it right, that's for sure. And if it is in the water, someone ought to market it and sell it everywhere else. Right? Walt Frazier doesn't want that to happen if it's uh -oh. in the water. He wants to keep it right where he's at. Conrad has Hurst and Coleman in the backfield now as LaFont gets a breather. And Conrad got nailed as he threw it. Just as he started to go into the forward motion of his arm, he got hit. I think Maxi Martinez is the guy that got in there. Play for the Rams. 
fourth down, five. Two minutes, 17 seconds to go, third quarter, 13 nothing, Sunset. Sunset will line up in the I formation this time. Hurst and Coleman, the backs. This is Hurst who stumbled just as he got the ball, and just as he did get the ball, number 44 for the Carl Park defense, Alfredo Leon making the hit. And a good chance for Sunset to capitalize and put him up by three and pretty much just end this thing. And they hang in there. Hey, it's only 13 nothing with over a quarter left to play. <laughs> and the Cole Park offense will get the ball back again. And the defense doing uh, yeoman's duties, I guess, huh? Uh, there's the, set, the telling story tonight. Cole Park offense. That's the French Baker uh, curse right there. Seven turnovers. Got the Petridge Farm offense going. <laughs> Cole Park switches into the shotgun. I'm sure Ernest Perkins won't be happy to hear that, but he's had to experience this nightmare down on the field. Vieira gets a good snap. He'll go with the out pattern, and uh, that's the way things have gone tonight. Freddie Naira just falls down before he can get to it. One of these days, one of these weeks, maybe in this game, someone's going to have to come up with the big point. They're going to have to put it all together, and it's going to happen. You never, you just don't know when it's going to be, but it's going to be that big play to spark Coral Park. And Tonight, they, they've had some really good plays, but they, they're going to need the big play and avoid the bad ones and, and the easy mistakes and the easy turnovers. Greg Naranjo checks in on the offense for the first time tonight, and this is uh, the numbers game we were talking about. Got a whistle down on the sideline. This is a referee's timeout. Aha. Uh -huh. you must stop or you'll find yourself a penalty on the field. Boy, you wouldn't want to do that with your defense on the field no. either because they might give up and a guy might ball by somebody and score. Vieira has Vidal and Santana, the two backs that started the game behind him. He'll go to Kwame Vidal, and Vidal is hit by Ron Verona across the 25, and there's a late penalty marker down. Vidal on the carry. Personal foul or Personal holding? Personal foul, foul against the Rams. Personal foul. The newest in headgear. David Garay uh, setting a new trend now for uh, football players all over the county. Yeah, he's ready to make pancakes. <laughs> Carl Parks, David Vieira switches into the uh, shotgun formation. Boy, he's had a tough night tonight. Vieira, with time, gets hit just as he throws it, throws it behind the intended receiver, Neira. And Vieira spent a lot of the night either on the ground looking for the ball or looking up at the ceiling. Let's take a look at Vieira's night. This is an isolated look at David Vieira. Ouch. Crucial punt coming up right here. Rams get a low punt, but get that bounce again. Taken by LaFont at the 48-yard line and gets it to the 37-yard line. And another penalty marker goes flying. 
36-yard punt. Lewis LaFont on the return. 118 to go third quarter for the Carl Park Rams and the Sunset Knights here at Tamiami Stadium. The Knights lead it 13 to nothing. 11-yard punt return. Personal foul against the Rams. Carl Park, uh, what is that, about the fourth time tonight, Nick, they've been hit with a uh, personal foul call. Well, we're having some problems with Nick, Nick's microphone. I think he was about to talk about the penalty problems that we've had. And uh, there's the telling story, 14 penalties in the game, and for Cole Park, nearly 100 yards. <laughs> 59 seconds to go and an official's timeout. I think we've got an equipment problem with one of the Sunset players, and I think it's that uh, shoulder pad problem again. Reminder about some of the upcoming events headed your way here on Sunday Sports. Uh, in two weeks, we'll have the Jaguar Volleyball Tournament down at Dade South. Nick and Chris will be down there for that. Then we'll go back to high school football, Northwestern and South Miami, and Southridge in South Miami. New running back into the game for the Sunset Knights. He's number 36, Josh and Elson Josh Elson on the carry. Derek Perez. And Derek Perez, who's uh, had uh, double duty tonight, along with another guy playing both ways, uh, Alex Carter in on the tackle. Down to 23 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Elson got four on the carry. Condrat has him in the I formation. It's LaFont and Coleman back in the lineup again. And Condrat with a short drop. He's got a man in the end zone, and it's caught for the touchdown. 18-yard pass play, Andrew Condrat. George Malvestudo with the touchdown, and it's 19 to nothing. Sunset over Coral Park. Five seconds remaining here in the third quarter, and Sunset capitalizes on uh, another mistake by Coral Park. And for Malvestudo, it's his first catch of the night, and he makes it count. Sunset with two touchdowns here in the third quarter. One at 3.32 and another with five seconds to go. It's Malvestudo catching the touchdown pass. 17-yard pass. Vinas' extra point is up, and it is good. It is now 20. And we're taking another look at Malvestudo's catch for the touchdown. And the Coal Park Rams have got 12 minutes and five seconds to put something together. Right now, they need to salvage something out of this game. Uh, I think that numbers game has finally caught up with them. Now we have to see if they can get on the scoreboard and uh, put a couple of drives together just to make the game look good, Nick. Well, it's 20 to nothing right now. You, you're, you got a quarter of the play. It doesn't look likely as you look at the, the newest in heroes, Ravastudo, who's, who's had quite a night. The, the almost great catch and, and, of course, the touchdown. But the way Coral Park's been moving the football, and they're going to be against the wind uh, possibly in the fourth quarter, the way the wind's shifting around, they, it looks like they will be against the wind the way it's set up now. We talked about last week, something to build on for the following week. Uh, something that Ernest Perkins Club, as you look for the first catch of the night for 17 yards and a touchdown. He's looking for some positive thing out of the offense, something they can build on. You really can't fault the defense tonight for Coral Park. They've played great. Perez drops it and picks it up, and he makes it out to the 25-yard line. Mark Klein, the guy that kicked the ball off, was in on the tackle that time. And that is the end of the third quarter here from Tamiami Stadium. With the score, the Knights of Sunset 20 and the Rams of Coral Park nothing.
Well, now they got to run down 50 yards or so to the other end of the field and uh, get things set up for that. But before they do, we'll tell you about our live sports updates every Thursday night here on Channel 17. At 7.57, 8.57, and 9.57, Nick Belmonte's personal favorite, that 9.57 sports update from around South Florida. Next week, Tom Levy will be up at Travis Powell Stadium. He'll be telling you about uh, Northwestern's football game. And we're going to have the Bulls on later in the year, right? We had them on last week, and we'll have them against the South Miami Cobras in about three weeks. That'll be a good one. Got a lot of good games coming up. Uh, American and Carroll City. Got the Southridge, South Miami game. Got uh, Northwestern and South Miami coming up. Maybe Homestead and Southridge if that game starts to develop into something uh, where both teams are headed for the district championship. And let us not our, forget our game next week that you'll be down in uh, the far reaches of uh, South Dade County for. <laughs> Southwest and South Dade. You talk about far reaches. I might just go a few extra miles and buy a key lime pie for my way back. <laughs> well, we got one quarter to go. We haven't seen the paper ram yet. You're right. That's Alex Marvez, the George Plimpton of high school football. That kid's got the wrong sport there. Well, if you've uh, been following high school uh, sports all through the year, number 64 in the Carl Park uniform, Alex Marvez has been writing a football diary in the Miami Herald. And uh, his infrequent articles have appeared, but uh, he has not, at least on the football field tonight. He told us for the game he'd be out there. Well, there's another uh, injury on the field tonight to uh, one of the yard markers. Yeah, it's been a rough night for the yard markers. The best thing to do is just ice those things down as soon as possible. And we'll just keep them on ice for 48 hours. Well, sit them out a play or two. Just lay them down on the ground. When play is back in, it'll be first and 10 for Cole Park. Now, this is how this game is going. Uh, he's talking with the fans. <laughs> he's totally lost interest. <laughs> First down, 10. Of course, if uh, Steve Cron watches our playback of this and sees that, uh, <laughs> number 75 may be in a little trouble. Well, if you don't want it seen, you shouldn't do it. Vieira to a wide open Perez. There it is. David Vieira has the plate. And he loses the football. Sunset, I believe, Nick, has come up with a football again. Unbelievable. Martin Klein with the recovery. Well, the old saying, if Coral Park didn't have bad luck, they wouldn't have any luck at all. And that's, that applies right here. 73-yard pass play goes for none. But a positive play. <laughs> yeah, that's about all you could say. It was a I positive play. I would think you're, you're looking at the longest play from scrimmage of the year for Coral Park. He probably should have just taken it to the corner. But decided to come back, and he's going to get stripped right here. Trevor Hanahan strips the football. And diving on the football is Martin Klein for the Sunset Knights. First and ten for the Knights at the four-yard line. Trevor's... Uh, had a good game, and there's Klein with the recovery. Eight turnovers, and there's our uh, injured cheerleader tonight. Kondrat hit. He tried to keep her that time, and nothing happened on that play positively for him. Well, we were talking about things to build on that, that big play right there. Actually, as Ernest Perkins is going to look at it as a positive. He, he completed a long pass. The guy had great concentration. He made the catch. Unfortunately, he got stripped inside the five-yard line. When things are going bad, they go bad. But it was a big play, and that's the big play we were saying that they need to have happen. Of course, 
what can you say uh, to the odd circumstances of, of getting stripped and on the five yard line? You, you almost come to expect it tonight. <laughs> if you're a Coral Park fan, you really do. Flores is now in the game for Sunset. Loose uh -oh. football, and it's a safety. Well, you're on the board. Flores fumbled in the end zone. One of the Sunset players fell on it, and Carl Park gets two points out of it. And uh, looking at the far sidelines, the Carl Park side, you'd think they just got a touchdown and were, were winning the game. Well, when it's your first two points of the year, you've been saving this up all summer long. The first week, you've been through two pep rallies. You, you've been waiting for something to go crazy about, and you got it right here. You got a safety. And they're going to get the ball back. So, hey, 10 25, maybe this game isn't over yet. And just uh, for the record, Nick, those are the first two points for Cole Park in the 1988 season. And there is an injured player down on the field in the end zone. 20 to 2, sunset on top. Cole Park will get the ball back after the free kick. And who knows, they put the ball in the end zone, go for two and make it, and it's a 20 to 10 game. Martin Klein's brother will be kicking the ball off. Mark Klein. And Martin will join his brother right next to him, as a matter of fact, on the kickoff team. You'll watch uh, 93 go back, and 27 will be right next to him. Oh, Mark and Marty, huh? Gabriel Abello was credited with the tackle in the end zone. Sunset has a free kick from their 20-yard line. With 10.25 to go in the game, the score, Sunset 20, Coral Park 2. Ruiz and Perez to kick off. And Ruiz gets it to the 45-yard line, and Nick Belmonte's just pointed out that uh, the paper ram made his first appearance on the field. Alex Marvez on the field. He's on the receiving team, as we said, other than uh, Juan Campbell on the once again. I, I there guess he, is. he must have been in the game earlier, huh? Yep, the paper lion. There he is. There's the paper ram. The George Plimpton of high school football. Carl Park out of the shotgun formation. They're at their own 45-yard line, and Vieira has a good snap, and he's got time, and he's got a man there, and it's caught and dropped. Incomplete. That ball intended over there for John Johnson, the tight end. He's one of the new additions to Carl Park's uh, offense at 6'4", 220 pounds. A rather imposing target. John Johnson. Second down, 10. In Vieira's defense tonight, Nick, he's had about six of those dropped like that. He he throws the ball pretty good, and and I I really think they're going to improve week by week with him at quarterback. Things like the exchanges from uh, from the snaps and the shotgun snaps, these are things that that will come with with experience. We, uh, Vieira with a pump fake got hit just as he threw the ball. This one's straight up in the air. Incomplete. Now Savori was all over him on that on that play Mark right there. He hit the air while he was attempting to pass. Third down, 10. Forty-five yard line is where the ball is at. It's a third down and 10. We mentioned earlier in the game that uh, Louis LaFont has a new school record for yards rushing for the Sunset Knights, and the guy he beat out on that uh, record was a uh, pretty good running back, Tyrone Campbell for Sunset. Vieira's going to get hit, and he's going to go down again. Number 91, Verona on the tackle. Ron Verona. Ron Verona on the tackle. And you're going to see uh, Tyrone Campbell with the Wisconsin team down in the Orange Bowl. That's right. That's right. On the play. Take a look at this one more time, and Vieira just runs out of time. She was looking for somebody to be open. And Verona in on the tackle. Fourth and 15. 
Perez in to punt. Perez got a good high punt that time, and there was no fair catch call by LaFont. He's on his way across the 40, breaks into the clear, and LaFont is gone. Flags are thrown on the play. Flags are down back at the 35-yard line, so this one will come back. For the record, LaFont gets it 68 yards 66. for the touchdown, 66 yards for the touchdown, but it's going to come back. Punt return by LaFont. Three different uh, locations are where the penalty markers are at. Take a look at this one one more time. They're going to throw it to high low and take the middle, I guess. You can see a great return right here as he takes it around. There's the clip. You saw it right there. If we run that one more time, I'll point it out to you. It was a, it was a definite clip. And one of the uh, Sunset players, what did he block him? About uh, 10 yards upfield, backwards. You're going to see it on the 35-yard line. It's coming up. Look for it at, at the left part of your screen on the 35. There it is right there. Right there. Perfect. Thank you. Oh, look at Chipper on the, on the draw. The Spalding Guide example of the clip right there. So instead of a touchdown, Sunset will get it at their own 45-yard line, but they will have the football. They had a clip and a hold. Holding penalty against Sunset. That'll set you back a little ways. The double whammy. The Ram 45. So Ralph Flores, the backup quarterback, comes back out onto the field for some more action. On that return, Louis LaFont has now set the school all-purpose career rushing record. Well, you heard Al Keen uh, telling everybody about LaFont and his uh, record night. Well, Flores, Flores goes down on the sack, and the Core Park defense continues to do a pretty decent job here tonight, Nick, considering they've been on the field the majority of the time. Now, we've said it all night. The defense for the Coral Park Rams has is, is really done a great job, and here's another example of it right here. You know, these guys got to be tired. They've been on the field all night, and there's a candidate right there. Yeah, 44 for the Rams, Alfredo Leon. We've called his name all night long. We've been calling Alex Carter's name all night long, sure. too. And Carter's playing it both ways. Here's Stephen Hurst off the pitch. And he slips and falls, and uh, flags from everywhere go flying. Flags are thrown on the play. And a Alfredo core park player, Gerardo Bitrago, comes up limping. And Gabriel Abello only call the Knights. So the Knights go back again, and Nick. Uh, we're getting to the point now where we need to be thinking a little bit more seriously about our Midway Sports Channel 17 uh, MVPs for the game. We've talked about uh, maybe Carter and Leon for the Coal Park Rams, perhaps maybe Louis LaFont for the Sunset Knights may be a candidate. Uh, certainly Gerald Little may be a candidate. Uh, the linebacker is on playing very good defense tonight. Flores, with time, releases, a flag is thrown just as the Flores ball is thrown. And in the general Andy area Andy where the flag is down on the on field, field, perhaps we'll see another holding call. Andy Sierra on the coverage. Let's see if they go back the other way holding. and try that St. Well. <laughs> this is going to change things a lot. They're going to be third and, third and whatever. Yeah, about 39 or 40 here. But they had a man open, uh, Fernandez, number three, in the flat. He just went the other way. And he looked down to the bottom part of your screen. Number three was sitting wide the open. Holding penalty has been declined. Third down. We are rapidly approaching the 200-yard mark in penalties here. Third down. 
Well, both teams uh, went, went over 10 penalties last week, and you're, you're seeing the same thing here tonight. Things that they'll, they need to work on. And I'm sure they will. High formation. Flores drops the football, and I think Coral Park came up with it. We'll see. One referee indicated Coral Park. Another one said fourth down, so we'll wait and see. Fourth down. Sunset, has recovered. Sunset recovered their own fumble. Although Maxi Martinez thinks he's got it. Take a look at it one more time, Nick. Maybe we can tell from the ground level replay. Boy, from there, it, it, it looked like a white shirt had it. But it's, once everybody jumps on the pile, it gets real tough to tell what happens because you can get you can get a football stripped out even though the referee had not seen it. Look out. Venus fielded the two hopper like an infielder. And the ball goes into the Sunset cheerleading section. And yeah, that's going to be rolled out around the 40. Venus' goes out of bounds at the ram. Close. 37-yard line is where they'll mark it out of bounds. Six minutes and 59 seconds to go in our football game. It's Sunset 20, Coral Park 2. 37, Coral Park and the Rams have the football again at their own 37 yard line. Vieira continues to play quarterback. And he'll shift back into the shotgun formation again. Vieira over the middle, in and out of the hands and it's caught by the backup player but that goes as an incomplete because the two offensive players touched it. No, I don't I believe they amended that rule. I think you can't have two offensive players touch. I just don't think, I think it hit the ground is the problem. Well, we'll find out on the replay here. Yeah, he never caught this ball. He almost did though. Second down, 10. One. Ooh, yep, there it is right on the ground. You're Chip, right. Chip is quick on the draw tonight. You look at these freeze frames, folks. Six fifty-four to go. The Sunset fans saying goodbye to Coral Park already, huh? huh. Vieira with the throw. It's caught and dropped. Oh. What is that? About nine times tonight. Oh. Looks like the Chicago Bears Miami Dolphins game. Maybe the Dolphin offense is out there. The shades of the Florida Gators last year, and that number twelve uh, <laughs> looms very reminiscent. <laughs> Gator receiving core did the same thing to Kerwin last year. And it's a frustrating thing because Vieira is playing a good ball game. He hasn't had a lot of time. He's had trouble getting snaps back to him and he's hitting people in the hands. What more can you ask? Perez goes out as a wide receiver up at the top of the screen, and Vieira shifts back into the shotgun. Arthur Parker, the receiver at the bottom of the screen. Vieira on the run. Fires one upfield, and nobody's going to get that one. Closest one to that one is the back judge. Don Lee recovering on the play. Well, Steve Crud can breathe a little bit easier. Mariano Rodriguez actually slipped past the coverage right there, and that was a lot closer to a, to a touchdown than people think. Look at the Coral Park side. Gary Perez in punt for Coral Park. Is it time for the fake, Rick? I don't know. What do you got to lose, right? Well, Perez gets one off, and this will be Hurst to take it, and uh, he let it bounce behind him, and he caught it on the rebound. That's one of the oddest returns you'll ever see. It was interesting. Kind of a, kind of actually a fun play to watch. <laughs> Tell you what, it was so funny. We'll watch it again. Now watch this ball bounce over the, the return, man. Behind him, back over front. his head, and the sniper caught him. <laughs> that was Hector Green. Hector Green. 
<laughs> you remember Hector? I, I invented that. Yep. <laughs> he First on the carry. carry. Can't do too much with it that time. She's thrown for a loss of about four on the play. And another Coral Park player goes down with exactly six minutes to go in our football game. Good time to tell you about our game next week here on Sunday Sports. It'll be the Southwest Eagles against the South Bay Buccaneers from Harris Field down in Homestead. Coach Don Drinkham's got a pretty good offensive squad this year. And uh, Curtis Wiles and the Southwest Eagles playing 500 football. Tell you what, folks, why don't you stay with us here on Sunday Sports, and we'll come back after station identification with the final six minutes of our game. Production assistance, staff wardrobe, and most valuable players awards have been provided by Midway Sporting Goods. Midway Sporting Goods, featuring a wide variety of the finest in team and individual sporting goods, located in the Midway Mall in southwest Miami. Major funding for Sunday sports is provided by grants from the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and the Florida Legislature. Sunday sports is produced by WLRN-TV, Channel 17, Miami, Fort Lauderdale. Welcome back to Sunday Sports, everybody. I'm Rick Potlock, along with Nick Belmonte and uh, the Bengals. The, the there Bengals. They are, huh? They're enjoying the game. Uh, their team's up 20 to two. Sunset over Coral Park. Six minutes to go in the football game. Coral Park players still down on the field. Things don't get too much easier for either of these two teams as the season progresses. Sunset playing in the black and blue division this year. That's uh, District 16 5A. You've got teams like uh, Southridge, Palmetto, Homestead. Kelly and Cougars improving this year, so it's not going to be an easy division to be in. Coral Park Rams in District 15 5A, and they've got teams like Miami High, Coral Gables, and Miami Beach and Columbus to worry about. Maybe there's a sign of things uh, to help the player down on the field, that big red cross. Got the peace sign going and the cross going. Wind is starting to pick up a little bit here, blow things around in Tamiami Stadium. Second and 13 for Sunset. Condrad is back in at quarterback. And he'll hand the ball off. Josh Helton on the carry. Josh Helton is the ball carrier. Well, I would think with 5.30 left, Sunset's content on running out the clock. But on third and ten, uh, they would need to put it up on this play, I would think. The Ram band in uh, marching majorettes are keeping the vigil here. Five minutes on the clock. The pitch goes to El Helton again. And he runs it out of bounds. So much for keeping the clock going. Yeah, I, I think he, did. he wasn't supposed to do that. He decided to run the ball, and the guy runs out of bounds. You might as well just pass it. Fourth and six, and uh, Omar Vinas comes back out onto the field to punt again. Cole Park has blocked one of his punts tonight. Unfortunately for them, they were not able to convert. Not too many things have gone right for them tonight. Here comes the rush. They almost got to it. J.C. Ramos almost got to it. And Perez fumbles again. Everybody's had trouble getting the ball, and a penalty fly goes down for a late hit, so Cole Park will get another 15 yards out of it. Vinius is punting that time, 39 yards, and we're down to 4.48 to go in the football game. 
personal foul called against Sunset. She's got my camera that I'm taking on vacation. <laughs> Guess she's trying it out for me. Uh, there's a real telling statistic here in the game, Nick. 130 yards to minus 14 on the ground for Cole Park. That stat needs no explanation. So we won't give one. Rams break the huddle and they come out in the uh, I formation and again shift to the shotgun. Vieira with time. Oh, what a hard hit. And the ball is caught. Boy, they make the hard catch and drop the ones right at him. 35 is Kwame Vidal. He got pasted. Let's watch this one again, Nick. Concentration, he didn't worry about being hit. Vieira finally with some time, and he throws the ball right on the money, the hit of the year, I would think. Look at that. Look at Chip stopping him in midair. It's hard to believe he skids through all those stop signs around town after he hits all these on a dime. <laughs> Are you saying that he's the Mario Andretti of Channel 17? <laughs> Mike Tyson. <laughs> no, we have another director named Bob Lopez who's pretty good at that. Vieira throws to a wide open player, Freddy Nera. And like I said, they make the hard ones, but they miss the easy ones. He was wide open over there. Three forty-two to go in the football game. Twenty to two, Sunset over Cole Park. You know, you can really see where Ernest Perkins would would be optimistic. This this passing game is not a pass bad passing game that they have. Just need a couple extra cans to stick them. You got the guy to throw it. That's for sure. Well, they've thrown it for 116 yards and probably 200 more if they don't drop them. There's one that's caught by Arthur Parker. He almost dropped it there, but gets the ball down to the 19-yard line for a first down for the Rams. And Vieira's not given it up yet. That stat was the antithesis of the other one. Yep, exactly. Ooh, again with the Don Webb vocabulary book. Look at this. Right on the money. They, they have shown signs of moving the ball all night with the pass. And as you said, with all those drop passes, this game could have been a heck of a lot closer. First and 10 from the 20. And that's what the Carl Park passing game is doing tonight. Backflips. <laughs> and we got a drama mean. <laughs> <laughs> well, very good. <laughs> Vieira about to get hit, gets the ball off. This is Vidal. And Vidal down to about the 16 yard line. Number 35. 2.58 and counting. Carl Park looking for their first touchdown of the year, and VR wants a timeout here. Well, you don't certainly go back to the ground game, that's for sure for Carl Park. Well, another reminder, next week it'll be Nick and Chris down at Harris Field in Homestead, the Southwest Eagles and the South Dade Buccaneers. And then in two weeks they've got volleyball to do. But uh, they'll be down in the Cowboys country, right next to the uh, Rodeo Arena at Harris Fields Complex. We might have to go down to Key Largo after the game. That'll be closer than going back home. I think that's where Bill Trout is this week again. He's still down at Key Largo <laughs> where on vacation. Is, where is Bill Trout? He's on vacation. Leave him alone. Oh, uh, okay. What do you think? 251, we had to start uh, tallying the votes on uh, MVPs. Well, let's give them this series. See what happens. Let's see if we're going to get. Oh, nice. I I'm not wearing. Look, the shoes are off, folks. <laughs> it's a comfortable night up here, Tammy. <laughs> For you. I got my tie off, and you've got your shoes off. What's that tell you about our broadcast crew? Oh. Uh, let's think about MVPs here while we got a break. Let's talk about Sunset first. We got uh, Lewis Lafont. Good night for him offensively. A couple of records that he set. And uh, defensively, maybe uh, 
Little, Gerald Little. I'm going to vote for Lewis LaFont. He's had a pretty good night offensively. I say LaFont and Carter. Carter, I agree with you. Alex Carter for Cole Park. So that'll be it. Uh, Lewis LaFont and Alex Carter will be our MVPs. But first, we'll tell you about this play. Carter's gone both ways tonight, but he's played a great game on defense. Lafayette, check that uh, Vieira is going to run for it. And he gets whacked out of bounds uh, inside the 10, close to the first down. Bill Server, Orlando Ramos, whacked him out of bounds. Guess who's on the field, Nick? Paper Rams in there, and he made a pretty good block on that pass play. Alex Marvez out on the field. You, you'll see him. He's number 64. All right, here's our most valuable players now. The Midway Sports, Sunday Sports, most valuable players. Alex Carter of Coral Park, Louis LaFont of Sunset. And thanks to Midway Sports, uh, they will donate a uh, most valuable player shirt to the school in the name of the players. And we hope the coaches will pass it along to the players and they can wear it proudly around school. We do that so that it doesn't affect their collegiate eligibility. First and 10 for the Rams. Right at the 10 yard line. Vieira, end zone, he's got Perez, but he throws it a little bit too far. You know, you hear the enthusiasm of the crowd over there on the Coral Park side. I mean, you, you really can't help but to pull for him to put one in the end zone here. There's not a whole pe a lot of people that have left that side. That's great enthusiasm. It's, it's good to see. Well, they've got a minute and 55 to put one in the end zone, and they've called a timeout here. Uh, the referees have. So what do you think the paper Ram will write about in this next article? Hey, I made the field. Well, he can give us a, a new insight, I guess. Here's uh, Ernest Perkins, the coach of the Cool Park Rams. I tell you, Marvez is right, and his articles have written a lot of nice things about that man. I'm talking with Ron Blas, the athletic director. He says that that whole school has rallied around him and uh, hopes that uh, he's the uh, man that can turn it around. Vieira in a lot of trouble. He's going to go down. Man on the tackle, Mark Savori. Mark Savory on the tackle. Timeout called by Coral Park here. And uh, we'll take one more look at it from the end zone, Nick. Just ran out of time. Good good, uh, good play by Savory. He's played a well of a game tonight, as have a lot of these Sunset Night defenders. Now the first half, they didn't get a lot of action, that's for sure. The offense spent 90% of the game on the field. <laughs> While we have a chance, let's recap the scoring for you in the game. Sunset got on the board first with 58 seconds to go in the first quarter. Louis LaFont on a seven-yard touchdown run. Omar Vinas kicked the extra point. Scoreless second quarter. Third quarter, su Sunset with two touchdowns. One at 3.32 to go in the third quarter. Bob Coleman on an off-tackle run, 27 yards. Extra point was no good. Then with just five seconds to go in the third quarter, George Malvestudo got a 17-yard touchdown pass from Andrew Conrad. Vinas' extra point made it 20 to nothing. Then with 10.25 to go in the fourth quarter, Albello tackles Flores in the end zone, and it's the first points for Cole Park in the 1988 season. And that's the score, 20 to two. And we're down to 138. Cole Park with a third and 17 to try and punch one into the end zone. Vieira for the end zone. He's got Ruiz. Does he hold it? Yes. yes, for the touchdown. And on the other side of the field, you thought Cole Park has just won the Super Bowl. That's great to see. They're going crazy over there. With 131 to go in the 20 to 8. Something to build on. A late touchdown late in the ball game. What the heck? With the offense they showed with their passing game, who knows what could have happened if they didn't have the turnover. A juggling catch, but he holds on to it. Fernando Ruiz. 
Albello's kick is up and it is good. However, flags are down. Arboleda, rather. Nelson Arboleda's kick, but we'll wait and see what the flags are about. Flag on the play. It's interesting why he he went for the one point here in a 20 to nine ball game. Here's another look at the touchdown catch. But I guess he figures he could tie it up because they need a touchdown anyway. Great concentration. Just really hung with that ball. Say hi for us. Think she cares it's 20 to nine? Isn't she on the Cosby show? <laughs> Keisha Knight Pullum. Extra point try again is good for Arboleda, and it is 20 to nine again. That kid's got a strong leg. 20 to nine our score with 131 to go. What do you think, onside kick now? Oh, you'd have to. You still got to feel you got a shot at winning the game here. Minute 31, get the recovery, launch another bomb, score, maybe do it again. Interesting, uh, if you're into numerology here, you're watching WLRN TV channel 17. That's a, a key number in this game tonight as both touchdown passes have gone for 17 yards. And the first run was seven yards and the other one was 27. Seven's hanging around. So for your lottery selections next week, seven, 27, 17. This is the fourth quarter. Here's another number. <laughs> hey, hey, it's <laughs> I mean, those gonna, numbers are just as good as any other number. It's probably going to hit and you won't even be here. <laughs> I'll have somebody do it for me. No, you won't. You'll forget. Mom, if you're watching, four, 17, 27, seven, two, Where'd that come from? Well, they got a safety. <laughs> Arboledo will kick off for Coral Park. Uh, Sunset anticipating the onside kick. They've got 10 guys within uh, 10 yards of the 50 yard line. Steve Hurst is back deep for Sunset. Steve Hurst is the deep man, if you want to call him that, at the 20 yard line. Now something else they could do, there's about a 20 yard gap between the 20 and the 40, then you may want to try and pop one up yeah, into. Yeah, that's, that's a tough play. You're really going to have speed to do that because you figure you're going to have to run down about 35 yards in less than three seconds. It's tough to do. Almost impossible to do, I should say. Well, we'll see what Arboleda does. He uh, chops one. Ball still rolling oh. around. They may have it. Yes, they do. The Coral Park Rams get the onside kick. Coming up with the football, number one, the kicker, Nelson Arboleda. Arboleda on the onside Take a look at it one more time, Nick, from the ground. He's been effective on uh, two of three attempts tonight. Of course, he missed the 47-yard field goal, but that's, this is almost as good as kicking a field goal right here. Short chopper, ball fumbled around, still squirting loose, and somewhere in the middle of that pile is number one, Nelson Arboleda. Sunset has called timeout. All right, let's take a look at it one more time. This is uh, from our top side camera. Now watch the kicker, see if you can... Well, he's out of your picture there. And there he goes, right into the picture. He's like a, a squirrel looking for a nut. David Vieira in the offense. I know he's been looking up here a few times. I wonder if anybody else caught that. Now nah, we're not insane. Just borderline. I will say this about this game. There have been, there've been faster ones. Yeah. We're working on almost three hours here. Now, now I'm getting vertigo. <laughs> Where's Jimmy Stewart? Here's that driver mean you were looking for. <laughs> Thank you. 
One minute, 15 seconds to go in the football game. Coral Park trailing Sunset 20 to nine. But Coral Park giving it everything they've got. Scored a touchdown, got the onside kick. And there's the Silent Knights. Touchdown. Ooh. Oh my. Vieira put it on the ground, picked it up though. Manages to elude one tackle, but not the second one. David Vieira is tackled attempting to pass. 91, Ron Verona in on the tackle. Ron Verona on the tackle. Down to 113 and counting. Carl Park going without a huddle. And they also have 12 guys on the field. No, they don't, they have 11. Seeing double there for a second. Vieira gonna get hit again, this time by David Macy. What really is starting to show right here, and I'm sure it has been a factor before now, is the fact that the receivers who have been going both ways are, are dead tired. Ruiz, Derek Perez, they're in a no huddle situation. They run down 40 yards, they come back, they run down again. Paul Park gonna get hit with an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty to push him back even further. Here's another look at the last play. Well, he doesn't have any time, but the receivers are, are just spent. 15 yard penalty. Who were those guys? I don't know. Isn't that from Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid? <laughs> Who are those guys? I don't know, but they're pretty good. I don't know. You're not going to get me to jump off of here. Well, we have reached the 200 plus mark in penalties tonight. That's, that's scary. Look how close that is. Time out on the field. 221 yard penalties and 20 penalty calls. And one yard of penalties more than the other one. Going for an artist effect right there. <laughs> 47 more ticks of the clock when time is back in. Ernest Perkins out on the field, giving another couple of plays to the offense. They're taking it right to the end. They're not giving anything. Some of the fans still on hand for the Cole Park team. And a pretty good crowd over there. Third and 39. If Metro Rail ran out here, it would be third in a Metro Rail ride. Vieira is going to go down again. Mark Klein in on the tackle. Mark Savory and Mark Klein on the tackle. Down to the back to the 20 yard line now. Nine. Now they got one more play to go. Fourth yeah, and 48. Well, basically it's fourth and goal. Oh, 20. <laughs> because it's 20 seconds left in the ball game. Steve Crowd still trying to get things together. Cole Park's got nothing to lose, so don't go for it. Vieira heaves one downfield, incomplete. And that'll stop the yeah, clock with 11 seconds to go. So Sunset will bring the offense out for one more play. They'll probably fall on the football, and Nick, that'll wrap it up for us here on this edition of Sunday Sports. Final comments about the game, we'll do it now. Well, it, it went as we, we thought. We thought Sunset would, would dominate with the running game, and they did that. Carl Park kind of self-destructed in the first half, but they were able to throw the football. So it was... There were some positive things on the Coral Park side, even though the streak, the losing streak continues, which we opened the show with. They did show signs of improving, and I think that's what Ernest Perkins wanted tonight. Conrad will just kneel down, and the clock will run down, and that'll wrap it up. Down to the last five seconds here at Tamiami Stadium, and the Sunset Knights will win their first game in 1988. Rick, enjoy your vacation. I'm going to certainly try. Weeks. Thank you very much, Nick. I'll be out in San Francisco while you and Chris are down at uh, Harris Field and Homestead next week. The Rams losing their second straight of the 1988 season to Sunset by a score of 20 to 9. And there is Steve Cron, uh, thoroughly doused with Gatorade. And there's Ernest Perkins wishing him the best. And that'll wrap up our coverage here from Tamiami Stadium as we have brought you another edition of Sunday Sports here. Another reminder, Nick and uh, Chris Prokos will be down at Harris Field next week, and then in two weeks they'll be over at Dade South to do the Jaguar Volleyball Tournament. 
and I'll be back from the uh, vacation. Uh, vacations are never long enough, of course. Bearing gifts, I hope. No, no, I've decided no gifts. I'll bring you highlights. That's why I bought the video camera. I'll bring you highlights. Besides, I can't bring sourdough bread back. It'll go sour. That's right. <laughs> you, wouldn't, you wouldn't want that. No. I'll tell you what, I'll bring a snowball back for you from Denver. How's that? Yeah, there's a, okay. There's a deal. I'll bring you a snowball. Beautiful. Final score again, 20 to 9. The Qual Park Rams losing to the Sunset Knights, and there's some happy guys. That wraps up our coverage from Tamiami Stadium. On behalf of Nick Belmonte and the entire Sunday sports crew, Rick Potlock bidding you all a very pleasant good afternoon. Sunday Sports, South Florida's weekly play-by-play -play sports program. Views expressed during Sunday Sports are those of the talent on the show and not those of the management or licensee of WLRN-TV.